Coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success. Good morning, everyone present here. I, Dr. Farhan Asparu, Assistant Professor, Department of English, School of Social Sciences and Humanities, privileged to extend my hearty welcome to Ohm Sterling Global University's two days international conference on recent advancement in pharmaceutical health and applied sciences, blended board, organized by OSU's School of Pharmaceutical Sciences, School of Health Sciences, and School of Applied Sciences in collaboration with Bingham University, Nigeria. So today we are going to have day two for technical session. So without any delay, let us move forward to begin our technical session. So as far as, as our delegates are concerned, yesterday also we had wonderful presentations by our delegates. Today, the first presenter is uh, Dr. Akansha Singh Rahul, uh, Oblique Rahul. And she is going to present on effect of Maitland mobilization and Cyrex technique on frozen shoulder, a randomized control trial. So Ms. Akansha, you are requested to be there on the dice. Thank you, Paul, ma'am. Respected sir, ma'am, and my dear colleagues. Myself, Dr. Kansha, working as an assistant professor in School of Health Sciences. My topic is effect of Maitland mobilization and Syriac's technique on frozen shoulder. It is a randomized control trial. My <clears throat> I chose this topic because this is the most common topic and most common condition as a general population. Now the introduction part is it is the most common condition in shoulder joint. It is an insidious painful condition with gradual restriction of all planes of movement in the shoulder. It is the main cause of shoulder pain and dysfunction in middle aged and elderly patient populations. Generally it is of two types. One is primary and one is secondary. I have chosen, I have taken idiopathic which is primary and which affects include female gender, age older, 40 years, trauma, immobilization, diabetes, thyroid disease, stroke, myocardial infarction, the presence of autoimmune diseases and cervical spine disorders. Next. Now in picture you have to see in there is a picture of glenohumeral joint where it affects the joint capsule which is an outer side next now the need of this study is many treatment approach were used for frozen shoulder but none of the treatment was found more effective now, physical therapy is first line of treatment without any side effects. Now, this study will help to evaluate and find out best treatment protocol for treatment of frozen shoulder. Next. To investigate the, now the objective is the, to investigate the effectiveness of maintenance mobilization and Syriax technique in frozen shoulder to compare the effect of Maitland mobilization in Syriac technique in frozen shoulder. Now, the hypothesis part is, alternate hypothesis is that there is a significant Maitland mobilization in Syriac technique in frozen shoulder. And the null hypothesis that there is no any significant effect of Maitland mobilization in Syriac technique in frozen shoulder. 
Now, the methodological part is, it is the randomized control trial based on clinical and time of study is two months, sample size is 30 participants, sampling method is lottery method. Independent variables is Maitland mobilization and Syriac's technique and dependent variables is range of motion of shoulder, vast scale and goinometer. Next. Now, the selection criteria is inclusion criteria is age 40 to 60 years, having a painful stiff shoulder for at least three months, having limited range of motion shoulder joint, shoulder flexion, abduction, and medial and lateral rotation. Now, the exclusion criteria is rheumatoid arthritis. <coughs> Sorry. History of surgery, surgery on the particular shoulder within one year. A painful stiff shoulder after a severe trauma and recent fracture of the shoulder complex. Next. Now, the procedure is I have to take in two groups. One is experimental and one is controlled. In exper next. In group A, Syriax Deep Friction Massage Plus Hot Pack. For increasing the flexion range of motion, I have to take lateral edge of the acromion. The deep friction massage is the normal execution with the axilateral index finger, rinse forced by the middle finger. And for increasing the abduction, the patient sits with his arm rest in about 90 degrees of abduction. We can palpate the spine of the scapula in the lateral direction as soon as we lose contact with the bone, palpate in the interior direction on the acromio process. Now, 0 to 7 days, there is 3 sets of 8 repetition, 7 to 14 days, 3 sets of 10 repetition, and 14 to 21 days, 5 sets of 10 repetition. After this, hot pack wrapped in a towel, apply over treatment area for 20 minutes. Next. Now, this is the way we increase the abduction of the patient. Next. Now, in group B, there is Maitland end range mobilization plus hot fat. For flexion, the patient was in prone line, arm in abduction position on the pain, free range, give traction at GH joint, and apply posterior glide between the joint and the glide apply on the end range of the patient. For abduction, the patient was in supine line, arm in abduction position, on the pain-free range, give traction at GA joint and apply inferior glide between the joint and the glide apply on the end ridge of the patient. Now, in this group, we have take 0 to 7 days, 3 sets of 5 repetition, 7 to 14 days, 3 sets of 8 repetition, and 14 to 21 days, 5 sets of 10 repetition. After this, we apply a hot pack hot pack wrap towel for 20 minutes like this next now the result is a total of 30 patients enrolled in this study all had aggressive capsulitis for two to three months with an age range 40 to 60 years of age the 19 patient almost cured after a three weeks treatment the result of this study show that end range mobilization gives more preferred result to the comparison of Syriac deep friction massage. Now these are some statistical analysis. Next. Now the discussion is in many physical therapy programs, mobilization techniques are an important part of the intervention. In this intervention included joint mobilizations of shoulder girdle and range mobilization with grade 2 and 3 according to the Maitland classification system and Syriax deep friction massage. Pain is increased by stimulation of mechanoreceptor which lead to interruption of pain pathway. 
range of motion increased because of breakdown of additions next now the conclusion is maitland in my study maitland mobilization is more effective than cerax friction massage in the management of frozen shoulder thank you any questions sir hello hello sir statics ke liye kaun sa software use kiya sir i don't use uh, i don't remember the name thank you sir. thank you so much dr akansha it was such a wonderful presentation and now we are privileged to have our guest of uh, today's session that is dr avan kumar he is a scientist department of animal biotechnology lewis hisar uh, uh, a very warm welcome sir uh, we are quite pleased to have you here as a presenter uh, to have a keynote from you now i request dr ajay kodar a uh, honorable vice pro vice chancellor to come on the stage and present a plan to our guest dr aman kumar as a token of honor so you are requested to be here please give a huge round of applause Thank you so much, sir. Before I invite Dr. Aman Kumar to have a keynote with us, I would like to give a brief introduction of sir. Dr. Aman Kumar obtained his B.B.Sc. and A.H. degree from C.C.S. H.A.U. Hisar in the year two thousand five. He did MBSc Molecular Biology and Biotechnology from GBU A and T, Pantnagar, UK, in 2008 under DBT Fellowship. He started his doctoral degree in Molecular Medicine at JNU New Delhi after getting first position in JNU Entrance Test (JRF) category. During his PhD program he got selected and joined as scientist at department of animal biotechnology COVS CCS HAU Hisar in August 2009 later on he has completed his PhD in animal biotechnology from Lewis Hisar as in service candidate in 2017 he started his research career Uh, career uh, in the area of molecular diagnostic and developed number of molecular tests from sensitive and specific diagnosis of bacterial and viral diseases of livestock pets and poultry he has published more than 90 full research papers in journals of national and international reputes and presented 16 research papers in national and international conferences and filed four patents for development of different molecular assay for diagnosis of important viral and bacterial diseases of livestock animals he has written five book chapters and more than nine chapters in practical manuals he has been awarded several societal awards by different scientific societies he got best researcher award in 2017 by lana lajpat rai university of veterinary and animal sciences lubas hisar and national academy of veterinary sciences navs membership award for his outstanding contribution towards research and exceptional services to scientific community so a very warm welcome to you sir thank you okay so i request you to just give a, a keynote to our audience thank you sir thank you thank you very much 
So first of all, very good morning to all of you. And I extend my sincere thanks to OM Institute, OM, uh, OM Global Universities Administration for inviting me as a uh, speaker. So very much thankful to the administration of OM Global Universities. Uh, my topic of presentation is on multiplex diagnostic system in health. So diagnostic, uh, as far as importance of diagnostic is concerned, so see, without proper diagnosis, how can you control the disease? So this is very, very important aspect of uh, health science. Because it affects the treatment aspect, it affects the control of disease aspect. So everything as far as control of disease is concerned completely depends upon assured diagnostics. And nowadays, as you know, everything is on high throughput system. So system is very fast. So how can you modify the diagnostic system in a multiplex mode? So we'll discuss here about the multiplex diagnostic system, what actually the multiplex diagnostics are, what are the different multiplex systems right now available in health. So we have very short of time, but I'll try to describe in very brief and uh, that will be, I think, uh, understandable to all of you. So we'll focus on just give this not next uh, yes okay so this is the what outline of our present discussion that we focused on the multiplex conventional pcr then multiplex real time pcr then next is a luminex assay that is on microsphere bit based assay and last but not the least is the metagenomic sequencing that is also a kind of meta I mean, multiplex diagnostic system so as far as this conventional pcr is concerned and their mild multi diagnostic uh, multiplex is concerned they are under the first and second generation of diagnostics and then real time is and again update what next generation of the uh, diagnostic system but as far as real time multiplex is concerned again some advancement in that and then See, in case of multiplex, which is the real-time PCR, some restrictions are there that up to three, four, five multiplexing possible. And actual meaning of multiplexing is in one go, or you can say simultaneously from single samples, you can detect multiple targets, multiple diseases here in this case, pathogens. So suppose, see, a patient is suffering from respiratory disease. A very good example is COVID. Is one kind of respiratory disease. No doubt, in later stage, that become what systemic whole system is affected in COVID. So, in case of respiratory system, see multiple pathogens are responsible to change the what or the means uh, for the pathogenesis of the respiratory system. Suppose uh, adenovirus or some streptococcus bacteria or the SARS-CoV-2 or previous one also different SARS is also responsible for even coronavirus in general, bovine or canine corona is also sometimes causing disease in human being. So that's why if you detect disease in one by one, that will take uh, three, four, five, six days to find out which actually the pathogen responsible for the disease. But if you have multiplex system, you can diagnose just in one go with one sample a different pathogens using the real-time PCR. And particularly, see the real-time PCR has two chemistry, most common chemistry for the detection. That is cyber green chemistry and other one is Tachman chemistry. 
so tachman chemistry is very specific so that's why tachman chemistry is very very prevalent and specific as far as multiplex real time pcr is concerned because one probe is other than one pair of prime primer in this in this case so that will increase the specificity of the test so that's why tachman assay based multiplex in real time pcr is very applicable in disease diagnosis and the same is very much popularized you might I mean, sir, definitely have heard the rt pcr test in covid situation so that is also one kind of multiplex system multiplex real time pcr that will give very good result even across the globe this test was popularized and very means, means you can say that that was the gold standard test for the covid situation no doubt number of tests came came uh, in that situation but the multiplex real time pcr that is rt pcr in this case as well popular name is concerned otherwise rt is not stand for multiple means real time pcr rt actually the reverse transcriptase but here rt popularized for the real time pcr that is also one misnomer in case of covid situation but scientifically rt is for a reverse transcription or transcriptase pcr rt pcr so see the key benefits of the multiplex system that multiple target per reaction that is feasible in case of multiplex cost savings see one by one if you go for testing so that multiply the cost of the test and but in case of multiplex the cost also diminished using this multiplex diagnostic system preservation of limited sample see the if you if you any doctor or i mean sir yes sir, doctor suggest you for the blood test see multiple times you will give the blood that is comfortable or just a single time blood is enough for the different kinds of diagnosis so definitely this precious samples preservation of limited samples and also sometimes sample is very precious very minute sample is required so in that case also if you have multiplex system you can diagnose multiple targets in one samples so that's why this preservation of limited sample is also very important as far as multiplex system is concerned reliability no doubt if the test is on the probe based assay or probe based detection system that is very much full proof and reliable so that's why reliability is also very important aspect of any kind of diagnostic and turn round time total time taken to complete the test so that is also very important that just in 2 or 3 hours you can diagnose multiple disease however in simplex assay for four or five diseases you will take at least 15 to 20 hours to give result if you are continuously work on that aspect but in case of multiplex just 3 hours is required to give result for four five diseases so that is also beneficial aspect benefits of the multiplex system like but whenever there is a benefits or positive aspect always along with the positive some negatives are also there so that is the challenge in front of multiplex system and see the challenges in case of pcr no doubts one pair of uh, pair of primer is required for one pathogens one targets but here in multiplex number of sets of pcr as per the targets required primers and that primers what interact to each other and that mislead the result of the multiplex system so standardization or you can say that first the designing of the primers and then optimization of the primers for for amplification of multiple targets that is one of the biggest challenge in front of multiplex system and that require vigorous experimental optimization next is loss of uh, sensitivity of one of the target when you club the different type of type of pathogens as a target some of the pathogens what that sensitivity for particular one target is not up to the mark as compared to others so that is also again optimization is very important in as far as multiplex system is concerned uh, false negative and positive just because of the intra primers interactions or intra oligomers interaction that is also very possible in case of multiplex that gives sometimes a false positive result or sometimes false negative result also so that is also challenge in front of multiplex diagnostic system next this is the statement that optimization of each individual reaction before combining it into a multiplex reaction is necessary when you develop want to develop a multiplex system one by one we will optimize simplex assay and then club it after optimization of the simplex go for multiplex optimization system so that is very important when you go for development of multiplex system next 
So challenges I already, you may have target DNA include high variation in target concentration and sequence amplic on length biasness. So in case of multiplex real time PCR, try to design means a primer in such a way that amplicon size should be very much equal in length as far as base pair is concerned. So that is the what again limitation in case of a multiplex system. If the amplicon size is of different length of, for the different target, that will that will affect the optimization, that will affect the sensitivity and the specificity of the test. Challenges you may face with primers include relative high primer concentration sometimes required in during the optimization, risk of complementary primer sequences, and different hybridization properties of the primers. So, so I already covered that intra primer and the inter primer for different targets interaction possible during the reaction. In just 10 microliter reaction volume, all the primer sets and probes are there. So there is a chance of interaction between that because each and everything is under the what chemical reaction. No doubt this is biochemical under in vitro condition this reactions occur. So that's why this reaction possibility is very high when you go for multiplex system. Next. Uh, this is the what multiplex, uh, conventional multiplex PCR where gel based identification of the uh, amplicon occur. So conventional PCR, no need of uh, primers and no need of uh, probes in that case. And we'll see the amplicon products on the gel. So the market value, see the not market, the publicity of this multiplex and utility of the multiplex, that is the number of publications during the years. So that this indicates that yes, multiplex is need of R. Nowadays, people are preferring system-based multiplexing, like a, one multiplex or two multiplex for respiratory, one or two multiplex for digestive system, one or two uh, multiplex for the what excretory system of the body to just what screen the system or diagnose the system with multiple pathogens when there is an illness in the health in the health of the patient next this is one of the example here we have clubbed here a conventional multiplex for veterinary diagnosis means veterinary health uh, means animal health related pathogens so this pointer no okay Okay, okay. Thank you. See, in upper uh, this particular slide, uh, these photographs, the three bands are there. These three bands in one go means amplification occur. There are three sets of primer utilized in this PCR and three sets of primer for identification of particular strain of Pastorella multocida. When he diagnosed the respiratory system in case of animal, number of pathogens means Pastorella based even some natural inhabitants of pastorella are also present in the respiratory system. So that will mislead the diagnosis sometimes. So upper one means that out of these three, upper one band is for the pastorella specificity. Yes, pastorella is present. Second one is a pastorella multisuda is there. Multisuda B, this is B type, pastorella multisuda B. And third one is pastorella multisuda, multisuda type B2, Two means B2 a strain is specifically. So in one go, we'll diagnose the specific strain of the pastorella for, for, for specific diagnosis of the disease. So this is one PCR where you can diagnose the even genotype the pathogens in one go. So that is very important. We have published this paper. The next one is in case of a animal, some hemoprotozoan disease are very important for the health means uh, which affect the health of the livestock system, just like in case of a uh, human being, like uh, pal uh, plasmodium means uh, uh, this malaria or lesmania. So similarly, in case of animal health, trypanosomiasis is one of the disease, thaleriasis is another hemoprotozoan disease. So here three hemoprotozoan disease we clubbed in one go, just three disease, th that is thaleria, thaleria annulata, trypanosoma, even psi, that is also uh, this genotic importance Timprozoma even psi causes disease in human being also. Nowadays, people are reporting that the kids are affecting with the trypanosoma uh, even psi. And equally, it's important for the animal health. So these three hemoprotozoan in one go, you can detect and then finalize the diagnosis process. So this is what uh, one of the application of uh, this multiplex, conventional multiplex PCR, where you can easily diagnose. And this costs just 400 to 500 rupees. We are giving service service in our university just 
four five hundred rupees per multiplex system for the uh, means diagnosis of the these diseases. So this is very comfortable for the means uh, progressive farmers and human. I mean, in case of human being, this costs at least three thousand here in pathology laboratory, three to four thousand for this particular test. Next. So this is very brief about the how this multiplex real time. This is another development in uh, multiplex system that if you see the probe, other than one set of primers, one probe is there and that probe is a specific to target means DNA. And that probe is labeled with some fluorescence dye. Here one is uh, denoted as R and other is Q. So R for reporter dye and Q for quencher dye at the five and three prime end of the one of the nucleotide oligomer probe. So five prime is having the reporter dye. So some of the fluorescence dye is labeled at that particular position. And when amplification occur during the amplification process, that enzyme, polymerase enzyme will, with the help of some of the properties of the polymerase enzyme, cut the what that reporter from the uh, oligomers probe. And that after cutting or digestion of the reporter, that reporter is free to flourish under the uh, laser based means energy system. So that fluorescence is detected by the detection system of the thermal cycler and gives some uh, amplification curve in terms of uh, what uh, either sigmoid curve or uh, means uh, this uh, melt curve in case of a uh, cyber green. So this kind of uh, fluorescence detection is uh, at the real time manner means while amplification occur, you can detect the amplification process. That's why the name is real time. That's why the name is real time other than the PCR. Here, in case of conventional PCR, we'll only I mean, see the amplification process after completion of the PCR and then after what completion of your gel electrophoresis. But in case of real-time PCR, you can see the amplification process while amplification is going on. So that's why the name is real-time. And the specificity is through the, and detection is through the fluorescence generation during the amplification process. So here one probe have been denoted here. But in case of multiplex, multiple probes are there that is a specific to your target nucleotides, DNA of the pathogens. So that's why, uh, and that uh, that fluorescence is a what a range of wavelength of the uh, this fluorescence for a particular target. So multiple wavelength uh, specific target fluorescence occur, and that that is the basis of detection. That is the basis of uh, diagnosis in case of real time multiplexing. Next. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. See, in case of real time PCR, <laughs> the equipment part is also very important. How much multiplexing is possible in real time PCR? That depends upon your thermal cycler system in your lab. So, here, this is a, what one of the photographs showing that four filters based real time means thermal cycler for the real time pcr so out of four filter channel so this four is for detection of four wavelength range of the fluorescence generation during the amplification process so one filter is for one target so in this thermal cycler only four plexing is possible because of the only availability of the four four what filters for detection of the four wavelength range. So that means how can you means uh, decide that how much multiplex possible in your thermal cycler. So that is the basis. Basis is how much uh, means filters available in your thermal cycler. So here in this case applied by system one of the system very popular system across the globe that is applied by system based uh, real time PCR that just four filters are there. So in this case four multiplexing possible. In case of another make company like Biorad is also backing uh, this thermal cycler for real time PCR in which five multi multiplexing is possible. Similarly, some upgraded uh, version of this thermal cycler where nine plex means nine filters are there. So nine plexing is possible. You can target the pathogens up to nine numbers in one go. So that depends upon the num means filter available in thermal cycler. And then you can decide the which wavelength for which target. So that is that is means based on the probe labeling. Whatever probe you design for a particular target, you can label particular wavelength of a dye for that particular target. So similarly, you can 
select different filters means dissect for the detection of the probes and by this way you can design the probes and primers with the help of online available software that is very easily available bioinformatics tools with the help of that you can design the primers and the probes some of specific uh, bioinformatics tools are also there for for means uh, like uh, premier biosoft biosoft is one of the software bioinformatics tools which is very specific for the designing of multiplex primers and probes so you can take help of that one that that uh, means uh, uh, bioinformatics tools is not freely just 15 days of a trial version available but after that you can purchase that multiplex uh, designing software next see so this is the strategy this particular uh, slide is for the how to uh, means design your experiment for development of the multiplex real time pcr so first of all a strategy is what design the primers and probe then synthesize from the commercial company after designing you just go for means uh, order of that primers and probe design primers and probe to a particular company that will give you just 10 or 15 days time in duration time will that company will provide the primers and probe for that and then analysis of oligos in your lab just check the one by one your primer is okay or not so this is the process and after proper amplification on gel based no doubt this is the development of real time pcr but during the development process you can also take the help of conventional pcr to confirm that yes whatever primers we design that will give the specific size of the amplicons so that is visible on the gel so one by one you can detect the means amplified product on the gel and then go for sequencing because you are developing a process means a real time pcr and after sequencing will confirm that yes whatever primers or probes we design that is a specific to a particular target so that is the problem means preliminary steps for the development of multiplex system yes our primers and probes combination are very good and giving proper means target based amplification so and after that optimization of the primers and probe optimizations uh, optimization means what concentration is important for giving a very optimum result in your pcr real time pcr so one by one keeping one component constant and change the others so like that you can vary vary the concentration of the different components of the real time pcr and then give see the optimized result in real time pcr that is the process of the optimization and after optimization of simplex assay go for multiplex system and then see the optimum concentration of multiplex is time limit okay so that is the process of uh, optimization and then after optimization you can send uh, the assay to other nearby referral laboratory for the validation and also diagnose the limitation means limit of detection of your assay how much minimum amount of target required to amplify so that is limit of detection yes our target is our system is capable to diagnose five copy of the targets five copy of the pathogens this is arbitrary number 10 copy of the targets like that you can identify the minimum number of copy detectable in your system so that is the what validation steps and also see the cross reactivity with other target pathogens yes any chance to miss means amplify or or, or cross reactivity of your primers with the other near means uh, uh, means related pathogens also see the specificity of your assay so that is the process of uh, what development next next this is already see we have designed primers and probes and see the different parameters and the amplicons length we have developed one of the assay where 115 that is 115 a base pair is the amplicon size for one target 113 for another and 108 is for third one so these three are very near to very near to each other as far as amplicon size is concerned that is the limitation of the multiplex system so we have designed with the help of this premier biosoft uh, software next and targeted three pathogens bovine herpes virus is one of the viral disease in case of animal that is also equally good for the means uh, important for the human being Brucella abortus, again, one of the genotic disease based pathogens, one of the bacteria, intracellular bacteria. Another was the leptospira, which is also very important for the human being, also. That uh, leptospira is one of the genotic pathogens. So, affecting the cattle, and also affecting the human being. So, we have targeted three pathogens.
for this development of multiplex. And these pathogens are causing, in case of animal, late abortion in case of cattle. So that's why we have targeted these three pathogens, which, which, which are responsible for late abortion in case of cattle and buffalo. Next. Next. Uh, just to identify the different, I mean, copy number, we have um, the, these three target-based amplicons is incorporated into one of the plasmid, and then that plasmid is considered as a positive synthetic control for for uh, detection of limit of detection in case of assay and optimization. So this is the what uh, one of the uh, recombinant plasmid where all three targets are incorporated in the plasmid. Next, again, this is the what analysis of design primers and probe. Next. This is the what method of optimization of concentration of the primers. See checkerboard methods. Just vary uh, vary the different concentration of the primers and see the optimum graph. At what concentration your graph is optimum. So by this way, the stable checkerboard methods you can identify the optimum concentration of the primers. And similarly, in case of probes. Next. Next. Primer optimization. Next primer optimization for other targets. Again. Initial simplex assay, which particular concentration is important, you can find at that one. Next. See the graph, a particular concentration which is very important, optimization of probe in this case. So this is one of the target herpes, 0.7 micromolar concentration was optimum. Next. And see the what sender curve, where you can make the tenfold dilution of the positive control and then see the graph, where your graph is a straight line or not. That is indication of the how good your your test is that is that indicates the efficiency of the assay so efficiency in case of real time pcr is right from 90% to 110 in between that one if the assay of efficiency is below 90% and above 110% that is reject that is not a means a good test so that is the means uh, that is important that your test must be under this particular range of efficiency 90 to 110 so here 99 efficiency in 99.28% next so after amply means uh, this efficiency identification or uh, determination of all these three tests, then club the each and every test and again see the efficiency under the three uh, these pathogens. And that also uh, here we have discussed uh, we have uh, uh, observed here 96 percent for herpes, 93 percent for Brucella waters, and 98 percent for the uh, this leptospira. So all are under the range of acceptance. Next, see, and then. Comparative equation, uh, this evaluation is also important. How good your test is as compared to existing assay. So, and not only the existing, existing means uh, existing acceptable uh, reference assay. So you compare your developed test with the already existing uh, reference test. So here we compare that uh, in case of simplex 96% and, the, uh, and uh, in case of our Biblex assay B for Brucella B for uh, bovine herpes and L for leptospira. We have gave a uh, name this Biblex multiplex assay for this real time PCR. Next, all are under the range, and see the how much is our qPCR assay really cost. So see 580 to 600 rupees just for that one. Next. So again, the diagnostics average means uh, limit of detection is also very important, and that is very good in this case. Next. Next, that is also one of the see diagnostic sensitivity and the diagnostic uh, this uh, analytical sensitivity and diagnostic sensitivity as well as the diagnostic specificity are all also very important parameters for the validation of the assay. In this case, 99.4 percent in case of uh, diagnostic specificity and 100 percent is uh, diagnostic sensitivity. Next, this is cross laboratory validation. We have sent this our means developed assay in another laboratory and see the result of the another uh, laboratory. And that is at par with the our uh, means laboratory based result. So that is called as proficiency test, or you can say this cross laboratory validation of your developed assay. Next. So finally, we got patent of this particular essay just four five days before on 14th of February. So this, this essay was patented uh, and a very good coverage in our uh, means and local newspaper. So we have succeeded in the granting the patent of this essay. Now, uh, one of the companies uh, contacting us uh, for this technology transfer. So thank you. Uh, this multiplex essay was talk. So now uh, we have sort of time, but we have another uh, just this microsphere bead based essay. Just one uh, means a slide that here in case of real time PCR, 
your target clubbing is up to eight nine. But in case of microsphere bid base essay, you can club two hundred pathogens in one go. This is just information to house that multiplexing up to two hundred is possible in our lab. Up to fifty multiplexing possible by this way. So that is depends upon the uh, the system you have in your lab. So multiplexing is not restricted to eight or ten. That is all up to two hundred pathogens in one go. Next. 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 Ab bada the chal. This is what how how microsphere bead waste work. Next. Next, next, next. The yes, third one is the diagnostic metagenomics. In this case, there is no limitation of the target. You can detect any pathogens present in these samples. So there is no limitation of the numbers of the target in case of metagenomics based diagnosis. No doubt, this is not a routine case, but in case of condition where a pathologist unable to detect the disease. In that case, you go means a pathologist go for this metagenomics based assay, and that costs twenty thousand per per samples. So this is not routine test, but definitely very important as far as diagnostic is concerned. See next, see PCR or the the microsphere bead based assay is target specific. However, multiplex here in this case is is just like what whatever is there you can analyze that pathogens present in the samples. So that is the multiplex. Meta genomics, next generation sequencing. Next, we are applying here in animal health. Also, we have diagnostic system meta genomics also in our lab to diagnose the uh, what any pathogens present in the samples. Uh, that is meta genomics based and GS analysis. Next, next. So thank you for uh, I mean so different funding agents. I am very thankful to different funding agency for uh, completing the uh, this research. Arastri Kisi Vikas Yojana, Government of India, DBT, Government of India, ICR, Government of India. I also thanks to teaching and non-teaching departments, uh, teaching staff of the department for whole at its supports, and also the administration Luas. That is also very important for for completing any any research inside the universities. So thank you. And uh, next, next. Now I will take questions about converting your simplex to multiplex. Okay. So, most welcome your questions. Any question? बोलिए. हाँ. Uh, multiplex conventional PCR is means as far as input cost is concerned, four to five hundred rupees. But in case of real-time multiplex is concerned, per sample cost is six to seven hundred, six hundred rupees. Okay, instrument. Conventional PCR is two uh, hundred, two lakhs to four lakhs, five lakhs thermal cycler conventional. But in case of multiplex, uh, means in case of a real-time PCR, ten lakhs to twenty-five lakhs thermal cycler cost. As far as real-time is concerned. सिंगल स्टैंडर्ड and probe is also 25 to up to 30 little bit uh, longer in length as far as pro probe is concerned as compared to pro primers okay so 25 rupees per nucleotide is available in market 25 rupees per nucleotides and if the length is 20 see 400 500 per primer is required no doubt probe is costly probe is right from the 15000 to the 30000 range is there <coughs> one probe but that one probe Of a hundred microliter, of of thirty thousand, uh, you can conduct uh, up to five thousand reaction in that case. Five thousand samples you can screen using that one. See the cost of that pro five thousand to six thousand. Last question, Deki. Jo un kuch novel finding rehegi, jaise ki koi aisa pathogen hai, jaise corona case mein naya achanak se aaya tha. To uske liye bhi kuch isse hum pata kar sakte hain. Last jo humne discuss kiya metagenomics, that is good for. 
identification of novel pathogens where there is no any information prior information about the pathogens prior information nahi hai to aap metagenomics mein jaye that methodology is target independent others are target dependent okay so for identification of novel pathogens you must go for ngs based metagenomics study and yes is next generation sequencing very good one uh, this is a very important uh, observation that primer dimer is one of the problems but see sometimes the efficiency of pcr is not up to the mark okay that's why this primer dimer occurrence means of amplification and then dimer means your primer is utilized itself in dimerization so either your primer concentration is high in your reaction that leads to dimer formation okay or your primer is prone to dimerization like uh, some complementarity occur in between two means one set of primer so that's why that primer itself but complementary to each other and polymerase amplify that one okay so these two two three positive means uh, probability are there in that case so either you can see the specificity means uh, during the analysis of your primer see the dimer means prone of the possibility of your primer with the help of software oligo uh, means uh, identity based software only available oligo calculator so that software will give you idea that how prone your primer is as far as dimerization is possible is concerned okay so by this way or as far as means weight lab um, standardization is concerned go for lab means a uh, different concentration of primer based reaction condition okay what you will do if you want to detect at early stage any disease what what early detection of disease yes this real time is very important test see any test means test is okay but here the means uh, importance of the clinician that clinician has idea about the what disease pathogenesis okay so when disease progressed so what sample is important for that so in case of brucella brucella in blood detected only when there is a systemic infection and systemic infection is onset of the clinician clinical findings is either patient is suffering from fever or any pain like situation a joint pain in that case only this detection possible with the real time pcr because you, in case like suppose the child is going to paradigm we detect after 1 year or 6 months or maybe 2 years by the time it gets possible So if you want to detect see that is me related with the disease progression okay so in case of brucella infection after infection that brucella organism bacteria lost at in the what uh, this lymph node there is no any availability of bacteria in the circulation blood circulation or any ejaculation any means a uh, solution uh, means a uh, what a uh, uh, biological uh, samples of the body so how can you detect that one so in that case very difficult when there is a onset of the clinical sign then only you can take the samples and then detect that one either see the synovial fluid from the joints or lymph node aspiration okay if you find means any any clinical problem in that case we'll take the samples from that particular area and then diagnose with the help of real time pcr it means before that we cannot detect before before the onset we cannot detect uh before the onset serological tests are there so but i mean to say within one week or 10 days or suppose 6 months suppose the person has been infected by hiv and you are detecting after one year no no serological idea means serological means antibody formation occur in, inside the body and with the help of elisa you can detect the infection inside the body so only means available test is elisa for the early detection of the antibody inside the serum Net PCR, which we are performing in the in the time. Which PCR? Net PCR. That is also means only possible when there is a what uh, any any means uh, means uh, DNA based samples are there. 
अदरवाइज नो मीन सैंपल मस्ट बी दी टारगेट एम्पलीकॉन्स आदर इन 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 दी फॉर्म ऑफ वॉट दिस सेल्फ फ्री डी एन ए और माइक्रो आर एन ए देन ओनली कैन आई मीन से डायग्नोज दी पैथोलॉजी अदरवाइज नॉट so in case of cancer also nowadays people are reporting that some of the micro rna is in in the urine or micro rna in the blood is early means method of detection of cancer cell free dna also any any question no question thank you thank you all thank you so much sir it was such a wonderful presentation and uh, we are pri privileged to have you here as a speaker uh, now i would request uh, dr ajay podar uh, our honorable provice chancellor to come on stage and present uh, a memento as a token of respect to our guest dr aman kumar Thank you so much. Please give a applause to them. Thank you so much for such a wonderful presentation. We are quite delighted to have you here, sir. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. now moving towards a technical session our next presenter who is there online that is uh, dr kiran kumar gal and he will be presenting on the topic behavioral vision therapy evaluation in children with autism spectrum uh, disorder and attention deficit hyperactive disorder a cross sectional study in rehabilitation Uh, Dr. Kiran, could you hear me? Are you there online? Dr. Kiran, could you hear me? Are you there online? I think that there is some uh, network issue with Kiran. Now, next participant we have is uh, Dr. Shweta Lathar, who is going to present offline, and uh, her topic is PMCT add on autopsy of burn bodies or replacement of autopsy. Dr. Shweta, uh, Ms. Shweta Lathar, please be there on the dais. All right, I think that she is not there, and uh, we have another participant that is Dr. Kiran Bala, a faculty of OSU. Ma'am, you are requested to be here on the dais for your presentation. Hello.
All right, we have uh, our guest, our next speaker from Nigeria, that uh, that is Dr. John Alpha. He's connected with us. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and others have greatness thrust upon them. Technology is best when it brings people together. So our, our, another great speaker of today's session is Dr. John Alpha from Nigeria, who also has been technically connected with us right now. Um, you are quite welcome. Hello, sir. And I, I welcome, I give you a, a warm welcome, extend my hearty welcome to you. I hope you, I'm, I'm, I'm audible to you. Okay. So before we proceed, uh, let me give you a brief introduction of Dr. John Alpha. Uh, he is BSc Pharmacy from Ahmadou Bello University, Zaria, Nigeria, M Pharma Pharmaceutical Technology from University of Nigeria, uh, Nusukka, PhD Pharmaceutical Technology and Industrial Pharmacy Formulations. Uh, 1999, University of Nigeria, Nusukka. Then he also holds a master's degree in health economics and pharma, uh, pharmacoeconomics. Then Popio Fabra, from Popio Fabra University, Barcelona, Spain. Other courses which he has attended include transformational leadership for enhanced performance, drug quality assurance, supply chain management, quality improvement in health, economic evaluation and cost effectiveness analysis from Harvard, USA, Oxford, UK, Ethiopia, Ghana, and Nigeria, among others. Then Dr. Alpha, he has started his civil service work as pharmacist at General Hospital, Aturpo, Benue State, Nigeria, in the year 1983, after one year internship, he transferred his service to the Federal Capital Development Authority and worked in the healthcare system between 1985 and 1992. He handled worried schedules as therapeutic interventions practitioner and quality assurance manager at the pharmaceutical distribu uh, dis distribution center. He pioneered the headship of the pharmaceutical services at the National Assembly, Abuja, from 1992, and nurtured it to an envi enviable department in 2011. He established a model compounding and quality assurance lab for service, research, and teaching. John Alpha retired as Director of Pharmaceutical Services. After 35 years of meritorial service in June 2018, he partnered with some investors and established a pharmaceutical manufacturing industry the following year. He moved to join the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Bingham University, Karu, Nigeria, in August 2021 as an associate professor. He was appointed head Department of Pharmaceutics and Pharmaceutical Technology in 2022. He began uh, then become the Dean Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Bingham University, Karu, with effect from January 15, 2023. John Alpha has published many peer-reviewed papers in reputable journals, including a monograph titled Plant Residue Extracted microcrystalline cellulose in tablet technology published by Lambert Academic Publishers. Then he has served as guest speaker at different scientific and professional engagements. He holds a patent on a novel topic, topical analgesic ointment containing an NSAID, essential oil and shea butter. His current research interest includes raw materials developing, including API and active pharmaceutical extracts, APE, novel formulations, pharma, uh, pharmacoeconomic evaluation of drugs, and quality assurance quality studies. Dr. John Alpha is a fellow Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria 
FPSN, Member International Academy of Compounding Pharmacist, IACP, Member International Society for Pharma, Farm Econ Economics and Outcomes Research, ISPOR. Sir, I extend my uh, heartily welcome to you. And we are pleased to have you as today's speaker on this international conference of Oversterling Global University in collaboration with Bingham University, Nigeria. Thank you so much sir, for being here. You can proceed with your presentation. Thank you. All right. Hello, are you hearing me now? Yes, sir. So you are sorry to say you are inaudible, sir. Please unmute yourself. Uh, sir, we are unable to get your voice. So please unmute yourself. Okay. Or probably some network issue is there. What is that going on? Now you are audible. You, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. You can hear me now? Yes, sir. So you are audible now. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for inviting me to give this keynote address. Um, I'd like to play some salutations. The president and officers of the Stalin University, the vice chancellor and principal officers of Bingham University. I'm sorry to interrupt, sir, but I think that you are facing a um, technical issue. Um, voice is not there. Yes, no, sir. Yes, sir. Now it is audible. Hello? Yes, it is audible now. Thank you. Hmm? Well, I just... Yes, sir, now, now it is audible. Am I on begin. now? Yes, sir, yes. You can begin with your presentation. Okay. Yeah, I was saying before that uh, the importance of holding trainings and conferences for budding and uh, experienced uh, scientists and, uh, and international researchers, researchers cannot be overemphasized because it goes a long way in the
skills while inculcating sound spiritual values in its graduates. The health sector comprising the pharmaceutical health and allied sciences has experienced myriad of developments in recent years. The past two decades have witnessed avalanche of innovative products in different therapeutic domains, high tech diagnostic technologies, minimal invasion techniques in surgical procedures, interventions, and so on. The applications of these innovations and breakthroughs health and applied sciences sector, but provide some recommendations. Now, the goal of the pharmaceutical industry is to ensure the continuous delivery of high quality medicines for the healthcare system. However, the process of drug discovery is challenging and cost costly. It takes about 12 to 12 years. medicines. Now we'll take a look at uh, the pharmaceutical landscape. Of course, the pharmaceutical landscape consists of, uh, of course, marketing the products, production, distribution, APIs, recipients, and equipment. What is the current global uh, market of pharmaceuticals? Um, recent data shows that the pharmaceutical industry is responsible for research development There is emergence of new technologies in terms of formulations, production, packaging, tooling, etc. And uh, I like to give a brief historical uh, perspective. Many years back in the early 80s, India and China, when you see the it was looking um, aesthetically poor. But today, that is his because the technology advancement is so huge that uh, the packaging and everything has now improved tremendously.
दूसरों को इज्मत करना चाहिए वैसे Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. Sorry, there has been a lot of uh, technical hitch here, but um, I'll quickly go. Yeah, I was saying that um, a lot of um, innovations have emerged in the industry, and uh, there's redesigning growth in personalized medicines. Hello? The development of patient-centric models, they shift from large batches to small batches. Development of complex uh, medicines and autologies uh, <clears throat> autologous patient-centric uh, treatments, um, redesigning of supply chain to better align with the patient-centric healthcare system, then dynamics of manufacturing procedures, uh, Will you like to match? Will you like to acquire the smaller ones? Now, I want to go to research and development. Today's researchers are becoming interested in inventing new medicines as fast as possible by adopting high thought through screening methods. One approach to discovering drugs faster is the high throw, throughput screening, HTS method which has gained much attention in the past few years. Current drug discovery relies on massive screening of chemical uh, libraries against various extracellular and intracellular molecule targets to find novel chemotypes with the desired mode of action. In recent years, technologies for combinatorial and multi-parallel chemical synthesis automation technologies for isolation of natural products and the availability of large compound collections from commercial sources have substantially increased the size and diversity reduce incomes to patients. Now I quickly go to total global pharma as um, the spend Dr. between 20. Dr. John, are you able to hear us? Yeah, I'm hearing you. Yeah, are you I'm able to hear us? Yes, yes, yes. 
Yes, uh, Dr. John, uh, there is uh, some technical uh, difficulties. So what we can do, if you can uh, sum up uh, your uh, speech in five minutes, please. Okay. Yeah, All please. Right, so I'll to, Carry on. I'll to do that. Let me go to um, the re Global Pharmaceutical Round this Spending 2014 to 2022, 28. As of 2012, the spending was about $137 billion. In 2021, it rose to about 238 billion. And this money goes on disease processes, compound testing, preclinical trials, clinical trials, and then of course, regulatory authority spending. Now, COVID-19 pandemic, which serves as an eye opener in rapid application of science in vaccine production. The COVID-19 experience will almost certainly change the future of vaccine science. It shows how fast vaccine development can proceed when there is a true global emergency and uh, sufficient resources. We're all aware that uh, the messenger RNA have been validated by the COVID-19 response. And uh, what has happened, the Moderna the Pfizer and all other companies uh, came to the rescue of the world by developing fast vaccines. But also used lipid nanoparticle delivery system. Though the process is more streamlined than conventional approaches, genetic technology allows researchers to fast track many stages of vaccine research and development. Um, well, we are all familiar with uh, the fact that the messenger RNA-based COVID-19 vaccines developed by Moderna and Pfizer Biotech demonstrated high efficiency in preventing COVID-19 at the time the world was in their need. Um, the co-vaccine, let me mention this one also because I'm addressing people from India. The co-vaccine by Bharat Biotech to Indian Council of Medical Research brought rapid relief to explosive and devastating consequences of the spread of COVID in India and other places. It... Now, future expectations. The unprecedented mobilization to create life saving medicines and therapeutics post COVID, post pandemic season has been an increase in digitalization and growth. just go to limitations and challenges. The advancements in pharmaceutical health and applied sciences have not been without bottlenecks. The limitations is less developed, in less developed countries are plainly fund limited for research and development. There is erratic power supply, which is still a major and side effects can be troubling. Health challenges. Um, we still have a neglected tropical diseases 
cancer medications are still a um, uh, problem and the management um, outcomes. We have experienced uh, growth in uh, the number of cases of uh, pancreatic cancer in Nigeria and the prognosis, um, you know, even post-operative procedures are very poor. Uh, so this is uh, also posing challenge to the medical world. We still have uh, issues of neglected tropical diseases, cancer medications and management, um, diabetes and complications, cerebrovascular accident, uh, which is probably referred to as stroke. These are all limitations. Uh, my recommendations is that uh, policies to promote funding of R&D should be in such a way that it will enhance research and development, in particular in the third world. Endowment grants by philanthropies, concerned organizations and R&D, stringent regulations and control to minimize incidences of fake and counterfeit drugs. We should also pay closer attention to development of phytopharmaceuticals from medicinal Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for such a wonderful presentation. Uh, we are privileged to have you here as a keynote speaker. Um, thank you so much. Once again, sir. Could you hear me, sir? Okay, thank you. We can hear show those slides. Okay. Thank you once again, sir. Can you see them now? Sorry, sir. Yeah, I gave some slides to Hitesh to um, to display. It was about my visit to India last year to some API um, companies and also some manufacturing laboratories. That is to showcase the. Um, you know, the, the fact that um, the health system and the applied sciences work in synergy because uh, the factories I visited had multidisciplinary, um, you know, staff, you know, ranging from biochemists to medicinal chemists, uh, pharmacists, and they were all working together towards um, developing uh, certain APIs. I visited one, um, I mean, the, the companies I visited were in Gujarat, and uh, one was, um, you know, producing from, I mean, paracetamol, and the other ones were producing uh, anti-hypertensives and also some uh, things for um, imaging. So all I'm trying to say is that uh, the technology has grown, that uh, complex molecules are being developed, and we hope that uh, as we increase the tempo, it will lead to, you know, more molecules that will help in preventing and treating uh, um, in emerging disease conditions. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. OK. All right, now moving uh, again towards our technical session. Uh, we are going to have our next presenter, that is uh, uh, Dr. Kiran Bala, who will be presenting offline. She's a faculty from OSU. Ma'am, you are uh, requested to be here on the dice. 
ठीक है अपलोड कर दो ठीक है सर हाँ वो किरण के नाम से ठीक है गुड मॉर्निंग रिस्पेक्टेड टीचर्स माय डियर फ्रेंड माय टॉपिक ऑफ प्रेजेंटेशन इज जेनेटिक पॉलीमोरफिजम ऑफ नॉट लाइक रिसेप्टर पायरमीन डोमेन कंटेनिंग थ्री जीन एंड रिस्क ऑफ टाइप टू डायबिटीज इन इंडियन पॉपुलेशन एज वी नो डायबिटीज इज मल्टी फैक्टोरियल डिसीज इट इज अस्ट बाय द कम्बिनेशन ऑफ से नेक्स्ट प्लीज दिस आर द कंटेंट ऑफ माई सेमिनार हाँ करते जाओ आप नेक्स्ट डायबिटीज इज ए ग्रुप ऑफ डिसीज जनरली मार्क बाय द हाई लेवल ऑफ ब्लड ग्लूकोज रिजल्टिंग फ्रॉम डिफेक्ट इन इंसुलिन प्रोडक्शन एंड इंसुलिन सिक्रेशन और बोथ देर आर बेसिकली टू टाइप ऑफ डायबिटीज देर आर टू टाइप ऑफ डायबिटीज टाइप वन डायबिटीज एंड टाइप टू डायबिटीज टाइप वन डायबिटीज इज कॉल इंसुलिन डिपेंडेंट डायबिटीज मेलेटस एंड टू इज नॉन इंसुलिन डिपेंडेंट डायबिटीज मेलेटस नेक्स्ट साइड प्लीज and type 2 is generally characterized by the increased level of blood glucose due to impairment in insulin action and secretion there are uh, many symptoms of having diabetes like polyuria polydipsia polyphagia as i already told you it is a multifactorial disease caused by the genetic environmental and behavioral risk factor and basically next slide please and diagnosis of type 2 diabetes mellitus uh, uh, if first and in developing country we notice people in the age group of 45 to 64 are basically suffering from the diabetes but in developed uh, in developing country uh, this is uh, mainly in the age group of 45 to 64 but in developed country mainly people in the age group of 65 and above more than 65 are suffering from the diabetes next 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 and lack uh, risk factor in type 2 diabetes mellitus there are various factor which are responsible for having diabetes like lack of physical activity genetics obesity next slide yeah ke rok dena these are the objective these are the objective of my study uh, to study the genetic polymorphism of nlrp3 gene and analyze their association with the risk of type 2 diabetes mellitus and then next slide sir बेसिकली uh, मैंने मेरी स्टडी में क्या किया ये नॉर्थ इंडियन पॉपुलेशन में स्टडी करी है हरियाणा में और uh, मैंने डिफरेंट डिफरेंट डिस्ट्रिक्ट से सैंपल कलेक्ट करे डायबिटिक पेशेंट के एज वेल एज हेल्थी पेशेंट के अकॉर्डिंग टू आई गाइडलाइंस तो मेरा जो एक्सक्लूजन क्राइटेरिया था और इंक्लूजन क्राइटेरिया था कि भाई जिन लोगों को ऑलरेडी फैमिली डिसीज है जेनेटिकली डिसीज है एज ग्रुप एक फैक्टर था इसके अकॉर्डिंग मैंने डायबिटिक पेशेंट कलेक्ट करे एज वेल एज नॉर्मल पेशेंट कलेक्ट करे After that DNA was extracted from the both samples. Next slide, sir. Followed by the PCR and RFLP. RFLP करने के बाद जो data extract हुआ जैसे हमारे जो sir आए थे आज doctor अमन उन्होंने जो बताया वो उससे related ही मेरा काम था PCR से related. उसके बाद मैंने stats apply किया stats में मैंने mainly chi uh, square test, SPSS software follow किया as the help of stats students. Continue, sir. Uh, total number of blood sample collected is 270 out of which healthy control is 102 and diabetes is 168 and this all are belong in the age group of 45 to 85 in between and dna was isolated by followed by the kit protocol method a table mention uh, continue sir continue and this back it slide group This is the composition of the master mix uh, used for the amplification of NLRP3 gene followed by the RFLP same RFLP composition is also prepared continue karo sir like ek table aage ha continue ha next next slide ek aur ek table aage table pe rakh dena aap ha next slide 
This is the basically clinical parameter which I observed from the diabetic as well as healthy patients like sex, age, BMI, uh, SBP, DPP, fasting blood glucose, HPA1C, PG, HDL, LDL, cholesterol, insulin, HOMA. ये जो पैरामीटर थे ये डायबिटिक पेशेंट में और जो हमारे कंट्रोल पेशेंट में हमने स्टूडेंट टी टेस्ट अप्लाई करा उसके बेसिस पे हमने देखा कि क्या वेरिएशन है वेरिएशन के अकॉर्डिंग हमने पाया कि जो फास्टिंग ब्लड ग्लूकोज है एस बी एवन सी है और एच डी एल है लाइक कोलेस्ट्रोल है और होमा ए आर ये सब हमारे डायबिटिक पेशेंट में ज़्यादा पाए गए एज कम्पेयर टू कंट्रोल तो हमने पाया गया कि ये सिग्निफिकेंट है सिग्निफिकेंट देखने के लिए हमने पी वैल्यू लेस देन जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव एसोसिएटेड है उसके अलावा जितने भी है वो सारे नॉन सिग्निफिकेंट है जिसको मैंने डोनेट किया एन एस से दिस इज द एक लास्ट स्लाइड ये मैंने जितने भी डी एन ए आइसोलेट करे है डायबिटिक से और कंट्रोल से उनका डी एन ए हमने जब एक्सट्रैक्ट देखा कि हमारे सैंपल डिग्रेड तो नहीं हो गए क्योंकि एट द टाइम ऑफ सैंपल कलेक्शन और डी एन ए आइसोलेट आइसोलेट करके रखा उसके बाद में हमने पी सी आर परफॉर्म किया उसके बीच में गैप था तो हमने फॉर एन एक्सपेरिमेंट ये परफॉर्म करके देखा कि हमारा डी एन ए बैंड शो हो रहा है तो हमारे सारे सैंपल में रैंडमली एक दो सैंपल हमने डायबिटिक पेशेंट के उठाए और एक दो हमने कंट्रोल पेशेंट के उठाए तो हमने देखा कि डी एन ए बैंड शो हो रहे दिस इज द एम्पलीफाइड प्रोडक्ट ऑफ एन एल आर पी थ्री जो कि हमारा टू सिक्सटी वन बेस पेयर का था और हमारे सारे सैंपल में शो हो रहा था जिसमें मैम ने रैंडमली वन टू एट सैंपल स्टडी किए थे नेक्स्ट सर आर एफ एल पी के बाद मैंने देखा कि हमारे पास तीन तरह के सैंपल मिले एक होमोजाइगस वाइल टाइप एक हाइड्रोजाइगस और एक होमोजाइगस म्यूटेंट टाइप ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ दिस थ्री पैरामीटर आई कंक्लूड माई स्टेटिकल ट्रायल कंटिन्यू सर and this is the my comparison of genetic as well as allele frequency after comparison with genotypes and allele frequency we found that hamara gg genotype is significant associated as well as uh, in i perform three different type of models like adaptive dominant heterozygous and recessive uh, next slide sir next next on the basis of this data in the review of literature i found that the particular snp of this gene are already associated with uh, diabetes in japanese population chinese population aur jaisa ki dusri countries mein ye jo snp thi ye diabetes se related thi to humne apni study mein paya gaya ki isme agar mutation ya deletion insertion kuch bhi ho jaye to ye hamari population mein bhi diabetes cause karne ke liye ek factor hai ek risk factor hai this is the final conclusion of my study <coughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Questions? Any questions? Hand, yes, sir. Hmm. Sir, ये lifestyle का reason है, वो भी sedentary lifestyle का reason है मेरे लिए. और genetically factor भी जैसे मतलब ओबीसीटी की वजह से भी हो सकता है बहुत सारे फैक्टर है डायबिटीज एक ऐसी डिसीज है जो एक सिंगल फैक्टर के लिए रिस्पॉन्सिबल नहीं है सर ये आई थिंक सो ये राइट नाउ आई एम नॉट एक्जेक्टली रिमेम्बर बट वन क्यू और समथिंग वन क्यू स्मॉल वन क्यू नंबर पे एनीथिंग एल्स मैम पहले का ये था कि सैंपल कलेक्शन होने में जो पहले का एज ग्रुप है उसमें मेनली टाइप वन डायबिटीज के पेशेंट हमारे पाए जाते हैं और टाइप वन डायबिटीज के जो पेशेंट होते हैं उनसे सैंपल कलेक्ट करना बहुत ही मुश्किल होता है क्योंकि उसमें यंग जनरेशन होती है यंग जनरेशन में पेरेंट्स अलाउड नहीं करते सैंपल प्रोवाइड करने के लिए क्योंकि हमें फाइव एम के राउंड सैंपल चाहिए और भी टेस्ट लगाने थे तो उसके और जो हमारा क्योंकि अगर हमारे पास कम सैंपल होंगे तो हम रिजल्ट कंक्लूड नहीं कर पाएंगे हमारे पास एक बहुत ज्यादा अमाउंट सैंपल होंगे तो हम एक्यूरेसी हमारी थोड़ी जा सकते हैं रिजल्ट की तरफ तो हमने एक पॉपुलेशन साइज हमारा सैंपल साइज ज्यादा चाहिए था इसलिए हमें ज्यादा पॉपुलेशन को देखते हुए हमने ऐसे एज ग्रुप को रखा जिसमें हमारे लिए सैंपल कलेक्ट करना बहुत ही ईजी होता मैं फिर हमने वो दूसरी 
नो मैम सॉरी टू इंटरप्ट यू बट हमने पहले ये हॉस्पिटल में ये सैंपल मैंने खुद मैनुअली कलेक्ट करे हॉस्पिटल्स में विजिट करके तो हमने देखा कि बहुत सारे लोग रिफ्यूज कर देते और उनके जो वो जलने क्या होते हैं इंसुलिन इनटेक करते जो टाइप वन वाले होते लेकिन एज कम्पेयर टू टाइप टू टाइप वन का जो रेशो है वो बहुत कम है हमारी नॉर्थ इंडियन पॉपुलेशन में तो इसमें भी मेरे जो कोवर्कर्स थे वो काम कर रहे थे लेकिन उनका पॉपुलेशन साइज इतना इतना इस लेवल तक पहुंच नहीं पाया अकॉर्डिंग टू एम्स गाइडलाइंस पॉपुलेशन साइज अराउंड मतलब दो तक तो होना ही चाहिए था मैम दस पे करके आप पूरे नॉर्थ इंडियन पॉपुलेशन को कैसे डिफाइन कर सकते हो एक पॉपुलेशन सैंपल साइज तो होना चाहिए दस के बेसिस पे मैं कैसे कह सकती हूँ कि ये जीन साइज सफिशेंट है बट वाई स्टडी इज नॉट कॉरेट स्टडी हाँ जी मैम मैम कंट्रोल अराउंड वन सिक्सटी एट कंट्रोल वन जीरो टू और डायबिटिक वन सिक्सटी एट सेम एज ग्रुप के सर हमने एक वेल परफॉर्म परफॉर्मर फिल करवाया पेशेंट से और जिस जहाँ से जिस हॉस्पिटल से हमने लिए उनसे पूरा पेशेंट से परफॉर्मर फिल करवाया जैसे कि जो मेरे और भी पैरामीटर थे बॉडी वेट बीएमआई ये तो उसी टाइम वेजर कर लिया पेशेंट से पूछ के जो भी होता है हमारे पास ब्लड प्रेशर का भी एक पैरामीटर था ये ऑन द टाइप ऑफ फिलिंग द परफॉर्मर आई डन इट जैसे हम करते हैं तो हमें एक पर्टिकुलर गाइडलाइंस फॉलो करनी पड़ती है पर भी हमें करनी पड़ती है। हाँ जी एक एथिकल क्लियरेंस होती है जब भी आप ह्यूमन ट्रायल पे काम करते हो तो आई हैव दैट सर्टिफिकेट हाँ यस मैम आई है मैम ऐसा जो कि आई हाँ मैम मेरे जो कलीग है वो इसी पे काम कर रहे थे कि जो टेन ईयर पे काम कर रहे हैं वो कौन सी मेडिसिन ले रहे हैं उनको क्या इफेक्ट हो रहा है तो उनका एक अलग वो मेरी स्टडी से एक अलग स्टडी थी मेरी स्टडी में ये था कि हम जिनको जेनेटिकली थी उनको हम कंसिडर नहीं कर रहे थे जिनको मतलब जैसे एच बी एवन सी ग्लाइसिटेड हेमोग्लोबिन टेस्ट है वो वो मतलब लास्ट थ्री मंथ के बताते हैं आज आपको डायबिटीज है कल आपको नहीं हो गया अगर आप नॉर्मल जो फास्टिंग ब्लड ग्लूकोज टेस्ट करोगे जो भी लेकिन हमने ऐसे लिए जो कम से कम जिनको पाँच छः साल से कंटिन्यूसली है कि रिसेंटली पेशेंट नहीं है जैसे कि जेस्टेशनल डायबिटीज होती है कोई भी प्रेगनेंट वुमेन है वो प्रेगनेंसी में उसको डायबिटीज हो गई तो हमने ऐसे फैक्टर को कम्प्लीटली एक्सक्लूड करा था कि वो तो थोड़ा टाइम बाद ठीक हो जाएगी इसलिए थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर किरण बाला नाउ वन पार्टिसिपेंट दैट इज मिस्टर वीरेंद्र सिंह हु हैज बीन लेफ्ट येस्टरडे टू प्रेजेंट यस मैम आई थिंक ओके कुड यू हियर मी वीरेंद्र यस मैम ओके ऑल राइट सो ही इज गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट एंड ही इज कनेक्टेड विद अस ऑनलाइन यस यू कैन प्रोसीड विद योर प्रेजेंटेशन थैंक यू यस मैम थैंक यू मैम गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी आई एम वीरेंद्र सिंह पी एच डी स्कॉलर ओ एस जी यू यूनिवर्सिटी एंड प्रजेंटली वर्किंग एन अर्बर्ड फोर्सिज मेडिकल कॉलेज पुणे टूडे द टॉपिक ऑफ माई प्रजेंटेशन इज टू असेस द आयरन स्टोर इन बीटा थैलेसीमिया ट्रेट सब्जेक्ट इंट्रोडक्शन बीटा थैलेसीमिया एंड आयरन डेफिशियंसी आर द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ माइक्रोसाइटिक हाइपोक्रोमिक एनीमिया स्प्रीड थ्रू आउट द वर्ल्ड इंक्लूडिंग इंडिया BTT is the most common non-communicable inherited monogenetic disorder of hemoglobin found scattered globally. India is located on the thalassemia belt and constitutes 10% of beta thalassemia in the world. The average prevalence of BTT is 3 to 4% with around 35 to 45 million carrier present in India. The iron level and the complication associated with its deficiency or excess are on the top focus in the management of thalassemia. A severe deficiency or overload of iron in the body can impair the function of several organs. <clears throat> Aim and objective: The current study was conducted to evaluate the iron 
Rizro of BTT subject to compare the various hematological and iron parameter between BTT subject and non BTT healthy individual. Material and method after taking approval from Institutional Ethical Committee, the present study was conducted in Armored Forces Medical College, Pune from November 2021 to August 2022. 230 participants were randomly selected from patient who attending the various OPD and department. 176 out of 230 were BTT subject, which was placed in group one and remaining 54 were non-BTT healthy individual, which placed in group two. Exclusion criteria, the BTT subject uh, with transfusion history during last uh, three months, subject with borderline HbA2, patient taking iron supplement, patient with other disease such as chronic kidney disease, leukemia, HIV and other acute infection were excluded in present study. Test performed, uh, we perform peripheral blood smear, complete blood count, high performance liquid chromatography, uh, serum transferrin. Blood collection, venous blood collect, uh, collect, uh, sample collected in EDTA and trial tube for uh, assessment of uh, CBC, PBS, HPLC and uh, ferritin and uh, transferrin test. Statistical analysis, the data were uh, analyzed by SPSS software. Data were presented in form of mean and standard deviation. That independent sample t-test was used to compare the data. A p-value of less than 0.05 were considered statistically significant. Result, the mean age of group 1 was 34.55 while the that of group 2 was 31.02 years. Uh, group 1. In group 1, uh, out of 176 BTT subject, 84 were male uh, and 92 were female. In group 2, uh, out of total 54 indiv healthy individual, 34, 35 were male and remaining 19 were female. In uh, uh, very uh, all, uh, most of the hematological parameter and uh, iron parameter had a significant difference between group one and two. Discussion may BTT is an symptomatic condition and they maintain their iron reserve better than the non BTT healthy person because they absorb more iron from the gut. The similar findings were also detected in present study. The iron level and complication associated with its deficiency or overload are major focus in the management of thalassemia. Hematologically, it is characterized by low hemoglobin, MCV, MCH level, and high RBC count due to comparable. Hematological finding BTT patient were uh, BTT patient are frequently misdiagnosed as iron deficiency anemia and most family doctor give iron supplement uh, wherever these findings are observed. Therefore, iron overload in BTT patient may develop from inappropriate iron therapy and causes significant uh, mortality and morbidity in both patients with transfusion dependent and non-dependent uh, thalassemia. Iron overload is well defined in BTT major, beta thalassemia major and intermedia. However, there are contradictory findings in iron status in people with BTT. In present study, 6.47 BTT subject had serum ferritin level above the normal range, which was lower than the result of Yusuf Zai et al., Kuresi et al., and Wender et al. According to Ekamdoid, no BTT subject had iron access, which was conflict with finding of the current study. This one, uh, there is a various study, comparison of various study that uh, detected uh, <coughs> iron overload. HB, H, MCV, MCH, MCHC level were significantly reduced in group 1 compared to group 2, while RBC count was significantly higher in group 1. The similar results were also reported in previous research ha that had been published. We use ferritin level along with serum iron and TIBC for diagnosis of IDA. This was because ferritin as uh, acute phase reactant and can be elevated in several conditions such as pregnancy pregnant woman, renal disease, leukemia and infection while serum iron level can fluctuate with daily dietary intake of iron. Therefore, a single test may not be able to detect the true status of iron. 
conclusion we can infer that BTT participant have better iron reserve than non BTT healthy individual, which indicating the necessity for measuring the iron status of BTT participant before giving any iron supplement in order to prevent the harmful consequences of iron excess in the body. Additionally, there is a critical need to raise awareness among patient, their family member and the local doctor in rural region who frequently prescribe iron supplement when microcytic hypochromic anemia is encountered. The result of current study also imply that ferritin level in conjunction with transferrin and TIBC is preferable to ferritin alone for determining iron load. Thank you, sir. Thank you to all. Any question, sir? Hello? Could you hear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma yes, ma uh, we have uh, some questions for you. Yes, yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes. Hello? Could you hear the voice of ma'am? Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes, Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Please. Okay. Please. Can you go to your six number slide? Uh, yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma yes. Ma yes. Six number pair. Yes, ma'am. 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 Yeah, I prefer yeah. liquid uh, chromatography, oh, okay. ma'am. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma it is not a test. It's a technique. And you are mentioning it is performed. No, ma'am. No, ma it is used for no, hemoglobin no, estimation, no, ma'am. Yeah, that's why you have, but you have it in here, HPLC. You test the you technique. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yes. HPLC test be bolte, ma'am. HPLC test be bolte, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma medical college yes, method is yes, yehi ho karke dete. Ma'am, ye ek technique hai, which is yes, used to yes, detect. Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes, ma'am
रन कर रहे हैं ये इंस्ट्रूमेंट मैंने बहुत अच्छे से रन किया हुआ है इसको मैंने अपने से मतलब अपने हाथों से मैंने किया हुआ है व्हाट इज दिस किया हुआ है तो मुझे पता है कि इसमें कौन सा कॉलम आप नहीं बता पा रहे तो क्वेश्चंस मैं आपसे पूछ रही हूं कॉलम का मुझे आईडिया नहीं मैम यस मैम नाम का कोई कॉलम का नाम होगा सो मेनी कॉलम्स आर अवेलेबल इन द मार्केट यस यस मैम मेच्यूरिटी हां जी हां जी Good afternoon, teachers and my dear friends. I'm Manisha from Kurukshetra University, Kurukshetra. Today, I'm here to present my poster on bioactive phytochemicals of tomato cultivar at different maturity stages. Objective of my study is <clears throat> antioxidant profiling of two tomato varieties, which is Arkarakshak and NT8. <clears throat> For this purpose, we take tomato varieties on different days from CCH HAU Hisar <clears throat> methods. First of all, we take fruits and prepare a sample. Tomato homogenate was prepared by uh, by pulling a one centimeter slice from equatorial region of each tomato of same variety. A part of Homogenate was uh, centrifuged for 10 minutes at uh, 47 rpm, <clears throat> and the homogenate was used for the estimation of anti anti antioxidant. Nothing. Nothing. Sorry. Now what? Yes. Little okay. bit. No. Thank you. Okay. The methods. first of all we perform some anti antioxidant assays like dpph and abts these were uh, followed by the standard protocols standard protocols the method was given in this table <clears throat> ठीक है पहले मैंने दो टमेटो की वराइटीज ली डिफरेंट डेज पे उनको कलेक्ट किया लाइक ब्रेकर स्टेज ग्रीन स्टेज एंड मेच्योर फुली राइपन स्टेज उसका होमोजिनेट प्रिपेयर किया सेंट्रीफ्यूज किया सुपरनेटेंट लिया उसे एंटीऑक्सीडेंट एसिड्स लगाए एंटीऑक्सीडेंट एसिड्स इसलिए लगाए जाते हैं ताकि उनकी एंटीऑक्सीडेंट कैपेसिटी को हम चेक कर सकें <coughs> दो एसेस मैंने परफॉर्म किए डीपीपीएच एंड एबीटीएस दीज आर द फ्री रेडिकल एसेस फ्री रेडिकल एसेस एंड द रिजल्ट्स ऑफ दीज एसेस आर शो दैट एंटी एट अर्करक्षक एंटी एट एंड अर्करक्षक अर्करक्षक शोस लो आईसी 50 वैल्यूज एज कंपेयर टू एंटी एट 
which means they have strong anti antioxidant capacity and after that we estimate the antioxidants like tomatin and beta carotene tomatin is a glycoalkaloid which is which is highly effective on uh, prostate cancer and uh, prostate cancer and second one is beta carotene this is the table shows that antioxidant content of my tomato tomato varieties beta carotene beta carotene content is high in arkarakshak as compared to as compared to nt8 and tomatin content is also high in also high in arkarakshak variety <coughs> conclusion conclusion of my study is the antioxidant activity as well as antioxidant content will increases with the maturity stages when we move from green to red stage the antioxidant uh, activity and antioxidant content was increases but the tomatin content was decreases with maturity stages it means uh, tomatin was found in green tomato Thank you. Offline first time. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, my research work ka kuch part hai. Hanji. Nee, sir. Jo Haryana, ye Haryana ke most popular varieties hain, jaise jo NT8 hai aur Hisar Lalit hai. Inki jo self life aur un sab pe bahut zada kam ho chuka hai. But inki jo phyto, jo inke pharmacological uses hain, unke baare mein abhi nahi pata hai. Jo mera next objective hai, wo inka check karna hai, treatment hai cell line, cell line pe, C to C12 pe. जिस पे हम चेक करेंगे उनको H2O2 प्रोवाइड करेंगे ऑक्सीडेटिव स्ट्रेस जनरेट करेंगे उसमें उसके बाद इनका इफेक्ट देखा जाएगा सर ये स्टैंडर्ड प्रोटोकॉल है एक पेपर को फॉलो करके किया गया है किट मेथड से पहले पहले इनकी वो एस्टीमेशन करी एक सेकंड पहले इनकी एक्सट्रैक्शन करी उसके बाद एस्टीमेशन करी तो उस प्रोटोकॉल से ये स्पेक्ट्रोफोटोमेट्रिक मेथड है दोनों के लिए जो कि मैम सिस्ट्रोनिक का है डबल अच्छा यूवी विजिबल यस मैम यस मैम बीटा कैरोटिन के लिए हम करते हैं फॉर सेवेंटी नाइन पे और जो मेरा ये है टोमेटिन है इसके लिए हम करते हैं थ्री सिक्स थर्टी नैनोमीटर हाँ जी दोनों विजिबल में इन्हीं बैटरी कंसेंट्रेशन होती है सर हाँ जी सर इसके लिए एक फॉर्मूला होता है आईसी फिफ्टी के लिए उसे किया है फॉर्मूला बताना है सर ब्रेकर है मैम ग्रीन ब्रेकर एंड रेड एक्चुअली जब टमेटो की मेच्योरिटी होती है सबसे पहले वो ग्रीन फॉर्म में आएगा एकदम मेच्योर फिर एक ऑरेंज शेड आती है उससे पहले एक लाइट पिंक शेड भी आती है मैंने उस पर भी काम किया बट मैंने वो दिखाया नहीं है और फिर उसके बाद एक ऑरेंज शेड आती है और एंड में प्रॉपर रेड स्टेज आती है जैसे ग्रीन है ग्रीन में जो कंटेंट होता है वो कम होता है एज कम्पेयर टू रेड बट टोमेटिन एक ऐसा कंपाउंड है जो हमारे ग्रीन टोमेटो में ज्यादा होता है
Thank you so much, Ms. Manisha. Next, we will have Dr. Kiran Kumar Gulve. He will be presenting in online mode on the topic Behavioral Vision Therapy, Evaluation in Children with Autism Spectrum Disorder and Attention Deficit Hyperactive Disorder, a cross-sectional study in rehab. Yeah, five minutes will be given. Dr. Kiran Kumar will be. Am I audible to you? Yes, madam. Yes. Yes, madam. yes. You can start presenting. You will have five minutes. Okay, madam. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for giving this opportunity, uh, OSG University. So, my topic is uh, behavioral vision therapy. Evaluation children with autism and ADHD, uh, hyperactive deficient disorder. So, behavior vision therapy often portrayed as an extension traditional optometric practice that requires practic practitioners take holistic approaches in treatment of visual disorders. A higher con concident of ocular mob mobility including visual perceptual disorders has been noted. Hello, I'm audible, Mana. Hello. But we can't see your presentation, but you are audible. Okay, okay, oh. madam. So with A uh, ASD, autism spectrum disorders, children such... Uh, uh -huh. You need to present your slides. Yes, if it is like possible. So thank you for that. Otherwise, I'll go with the verbal here. Slide with. Please continue. Yeah, such children shows la lack of eye contact, uh, poorly developmental eye-hand coordination, and uh, visual perception skills are very uh, low. So, due to this uh, def deficit, it affects development of uh, cognitive motor skills, uh, perception, behavior, social uh, interaction. So. And communication of the children, a developmental delay, uh, the practice of behavior optometry begins in the middle, middle uh, last of country. So founding author, Martin Skefferton, uh, Skefferton portraitly vision uh, as product of interaction of four components or sub process. The sub process are Antigrity, concentrating, uh, indefiniency, and speech auditory process. Skefferton, 1964, uh, state that convergence is the odd uh, accumulated component of centric, centering process. Vision therapy can be defined as therapy that designed to arrange conditions conditions that will be allowed perceiver to give a new insight which helps to improve their perception world and become more efficient. Visual deficiency includes accommodation, binocular vision and ocular motor injury. There are many problems are claimed by optometrists can help by vision therapy. These problems are dyslexia, dyspraxia, poor concentration, poor hand uh, writing, visual motors, image, uh, like image distractions, and strabismus and amlopia. So, autism spectrum disorder is a group of neurodevelopmental disorder with specific delayed and deviation in social communication and cognitive development. development. These particular children have vision issues such as fixation, focusing along with poor eye contact. This study was done in 339 children of rehabilitation between age like 2 to 9 years. 
data regarding socio demographic uh, factors was obtained the available data comp compelling vision vision disorders was categorized under following the settings accommodation convergence insufficiency one and uh, amblopia cases we call like lazy eye the third one is like uh, prism glasses for deviation eye uh, for uh, diplopia cases or doubling vision uh, in the patients focusing fixation issues for distance and near vision uh, like uh, so computer users uh, kind of uh, our accountants for them uh, like they have like distance vision deficiency sorry focusing issues and binocular poor vision these vision disorders were reported 306 children out of which 279 children are under vision therapy the children were absorbed for a period of 6 months their development was noted each month behavioral vision therapy is significantly help in special children actually like methodology and participants rehabilitation center in hyderabad uh, telangana city was uh, selected this rehabilitation giving services uh, and and therapies so autism and adhd children parents of all the partic participants were informed about the study and the therapy needed data was collected in total for 339 children of age 2 to 9 years out of which 306 considered needful for therapy we were able to convince parents of 279 children for the vision in this vision therapy improvement was marked first third and sixth month eye examination so first and formal uh, like foremost complete eye examination was done along with uh, test that included complete case history parental and the postnatal family history was noted uh, down visual acuity test was done if the vision is noted covering 6 by 6 then it was further tested for the refraction and refractive errors by using retinoscopy uh, its instrument for uh, eye examination in uh, pediatric cases based on the results of test spherical or cylindrical lenses were prescribed if they have like uh, spectacle power so slit like examination was also used for physical examination and uh, slit lamp is a high incentive light which is used low powered microscope it has different uh, filters uh it's uh, viewing of the eye posterior chamber and anterior chamber also through the instrument so sclera and uh, schemer test if they have like dryness in the eye so definitely we, we can de detect with the schemer test uh, like uh, sips are there so perform dryness any headache issues the behavior that are the attribute to both artist hello hello yes sir हमारी तरह आपके पास दो मिनट है उसमें आपको कंक्लूड करना है हेलो सर दो मिनट कंक्लूड करना है दो मिनट में ओके सर ओके सो विजन थेरेपी प्रॉब्लम्स इंक्लूडिंग लैक ऑफ आई कंसंट्रेशन एंड हेलो अरे ये आवाज आ रही है या आवाज आ रही है सर हां 2 मिनट में कर दो आप अपना काम ओके सर सो इन विजन थेरेपी वी आर यूजिंग इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स लाइक ब्रूक्स स्ट्रिंग कैरोस्कोप सेनाप्टोफोर प्रिज्म बार राल फ्लोरर एंड हार्ड चार्ट बायनॉक्स सॉफ्टवेयर एंड फ्लिपर्स अपर्चर रूलर लेंस रैक्स स्पिनिंग ग्लोब्स सो इन दिस ग्रुप्स रिजल्ट्स आर लाइक सो वी डिवाइडेड लाइक फोर ग्रुप्स 
so that one also like month wise first month third month and for six month group a poor concentration and fixation issues uh, 5 to 20% improvement is uh, seen in concentration and fixation issues third month like 20 20 to 50% and sixth month is 50 to 70% the group b is like lazy eye lazy eye improvement seen not minimal uh, in first month and third month like uh, moderate and uh, the improvements are third month in is like moderate to uh, in good condition approximately 6 by 9 vision so group c is phoria or hidden squint hidden squint means like we cannot see with the through uh, naked eye we can cover uh, our eye cover and uncover test so if they have like squint jo tirchi ag bolte hai us cheez ko hum ye phoria condition mana jata hai so improvement seen in like 10 to 15% uh, in first month like third month 15 to 25% and improvement seen in like the sixth month 25 to 65% ab agar kisi ko phoria uh, condition hai jo squint eye so usme improvements around 60 65% uh, dikhte hai so group d is like convergence and accommodation issues if they have like uh, distance vision or near vision near vision like uh, we uh, concern like laptops mobile mobiles or any tab uh, digital gadgets so convergence accommodation has mild improvement in first vision first month and convergence and uh, accommodation uh, shows significant uh, improvement in third month and con- convergence accommodation improvements uh, uh, seen in almost near to normal around uh, 20 diopters so it is like in sixth month thank you hello any question sir हेलो थैंक यू सो मच डॉक्टर किरण नेक्स्ट वी विल हैव मिस्टर मदन राज चपागैन फ्रॉम नेपाल ही विल बी प्रेजेंटिंग इन द ऑनलाइन मोड Mr Madan Raj Ji Dr Kiran ji aap ja sakte ho Thank you thank you I think uh, Mr. Madan Raj is not available right now, so Miss Sakshi Jangra will present. Miss Sakshi, yeah. The topic for her presentation is: Does advanced practice in radiography benefit the healthcare system? A literature review. Thank you, ma'am. मैं जो मैं बोल रही हूँ दिखा दे सर ये ये इसको साइड में करते हैं यार फुल स्क्रीन करते हैं इसको और साइड में मैं तो सर मेरा पेस बताइए सर ये यहाँ से भी नहीं होती क्या चेंज नेक्स्ट लाइट आप कोई करोगे Good afternoon, one and all. I am Sakshi, going to present the topic: Does advanced practice in radiography benefit the healthcare system? A literature review. These are the contents. Next. Next. Thank you, sir. 
X-ray was discovered by Sir Wilhelm Conrad Rongen on November 8, 1896. He got first prize for this discovery in 1901. In X-ray, X-ray is used for unknown radiation. X-ray is an electromagnetic radiation which have shortest wavelength. It passes through any type of matter that is solid, liquid and gas. Advanced practice with radiography or academic roles will be expected to deliver efficiently within their domains. Radiographer responsibility is determined by his or her competencies and the practice setting. The extension of skills must be underprinted by appropriate education, training and clinical practice must lie within locally agreed protocols and clinical governance framework. So next slide. The first radiograph originally radiographs were taken on glass photographic plates. Then in 1918, George Eastman introduced the radiographic film and today many radiographic images are recorded and stored digitally. More radiology technology added over the years, many new techniques falling into the radiology category have been introduced. CT scan was one of them, which was invented by Sir Godfrey Hounsfield and announced in 1972. In addition, ultrasound started to be used in the 1905 with real-time ultrasound machines coming to the medical community to, in the late 1970s. The first commercial MRI scanner was developed by Sir Raymond Dem, uh, Vahan Demedian in 1977 and in 1950s, advancement in medical imaging as nuclear medicine. Sir. Okay. Okay. Sorry. In the 1950s, advancement in medical imaging as nuclear medicine became a feasible diagnostic imaging tool. PET scans came from this technology and became the primary technique to diagnose cancer. So next slide. Recent advances in CT technology. In CT scan, the helical scan can be used. The 3D imaging in CT scan can be performed by using MPR, MIP and volume rendering techniques. The images can be viewed in axial, coronal, and sagittal planes. In the city image quality, industry leading high contrast resolution and noise free images. Patient dose optimization is getting further amplified with more innovations and reconstruction techniques are setting a new direction. The most recent advancement in CT scan is that we can be able to perform the coronary angiography as well as cerebral angiography. MRI stands for magnetic resonance imaging. It is based on nuclear magnetic resonance in which magnetic fields are radio waves give radio signals. In 1970, Sir Raymond Vahan Demedian discovered the basis for using magnetic resonance imaging as a tool for medical diagnosis. The first ever MRI scanner took four hours to image a single slice. Then the 1.5 Tesla MRI came which only takes 15 to 20 minutes for imaging. Nowadays, a latest three Tesla MRI scanner are used in which we can perform 3D imaging and fetal MRI. The aim was to introduce the advanced practice. This benefits the patient healthcare system and to enhance the responsibility and skills of radiographers. The objective is to be aware of the radiographers how to enhance their professional growth by advanced practice. These are the recent literature reviews. So next, so next slide. Methods. This is the description. Okay, <laughs> so, result. So next slide. Result. The overall rate of CT utilization in accordance with practice is increased in the 15 past 15 years. The innovations in medical imaging represent an exceptional success story. In the past 15 years, the advancement in radiographer skills are also increased regarding analytical or observational skills in anatomy, physiology, biology, IT skills to use computerized equipment and communication skills. The involvement of clinicians in strategies to measure the outcome and improve their patient care services increasing. By the advancement in radiology, the any kind of diagnosis and treatment is easier and available. The cost production is not satisfactory for these patients. So next slide. In conclusion, while the advancement in medical imaging represents an exceptional success story, this arises from a combination of circumstances which include the quality and level of experience with and availability of good contemporary referral guidelines. Next slide. These are the selected references. Next slide. Thank you so much. Any questions?
सर एक्चुअली जो हमारे सर विलियम कोनराड रोंजन थे जिन्होंने हमारे एक्सरे रेडिएशन को डिस्कवर किया था वो एक मैथमेटिशियन थे तो जैसे कि हम मैथ में एक टर्म को लेट सपोज करते हैं तो उन्होंने इस रेडिएशन का कोई नाम नहीं था तो उन्होंने इसको लेट सपोज एक्स किया था और आफ्टर डेट इन्होंने इसको नेम दे दिया था एक्स रेडिएशन सॉरी सर अच्छा वेवलेंथ ये एक्चुअली सर आई एम नॉट मुझे कंप्लीटली रेंज याद नहीं है अभी सर डिस्क्रिप्टिव स्टडी एक्चुअली ये कि मैंने इसके ऊपर कोई डाटा एनालिसिस या कोई एक्सपेरिमेंटल वर्क नहीं किया ये कम्प्लीटली बेस्ड था कि जितने भी रिसेंट एडवांसमेंट के ऊपर लिटरेचर आई है उसके ऊपर बेसिस पे स्टडी थी क्या सर नहीं सर एक्सरे करवाने से कोई डिपेंड करता है कि आप अगर नॉर्मल एक्सरे करवाने जा रहे हो उससे कोई कैंसर नहीं हो सकता ठीक है क्योंकि वहां पे जो वेवलेंथ होती है हम जो डोज होती है जिसको हम एम कहते हैं वो बहुत कम रखते हैं बट जब हम जब न्यूक्लियर मेडिसिन में वर्क करते हैं वहां पे हम गामा रेडिएशन रखते हैं तो वहां से कुछ हो सकता है सर सर एक्चुअली जो कंटिन्यू चार पांच साल से एक्सेस कर रहे हैं तो उनके लिए हमारे पास सर रेगुलेटरी लाइट एपरेंस और सब यूज होते हैं जिससे कि उनको कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं आ पाती नहीं सर ऐसा सच तो ये इससे कोई दिक्कत नहीं होती वो उनका कुछ पर्सनल होगा नहीं सर होता है सर टी एल डी बैचेस हर छह महीने में जाते होते हैं हमारे पार्क में सर देखिए ये ना क्लोस्ट्रोफोबिक पेशेंट्स होते हैं जब हमारा बोर होता है उसमें पेशेंट को डर लग जाता है तो फर्स्टली तो हम ये ट्राई करते हैं कि उनको समझाया जाए इसको टाइम दिया जाता है स्टडी को थोड़ा सा और लेट कर देते हैं अगर ये होता है कि पेशेंट बिल्कुल भी नहीं कर पा रहा है तो हमारे पास एक ओपन एम होती है तो क्लोस्ट्रोफोबिक पेशेंट्स के लिए हम वो भी यूज करते हैं हाँ थैंक यू सर Thank you so much, Miss Sakshi. Next, we'll have Miss Pinky Rani. She will be presenting in offline mode on the topic inflammatory markers in psoriasis fluorification. Review. Good afternoon all. I am Pinky Rani. I am Pinky Rani. Present the. I am going to present the role of inflammatory markers post psoriasis. Next one. These are the contents.
and the introduction of the psoriasis is most prevalent inflammatory skin disorder that follows chronic causes seriously reducing the patient quality of life as per who reports psoriasis is seen as a serious global issue with approximately 100 million individuals affected worldwide rushing the situation the incidence of psoriasis is increasing every year around the world and the inflammatory makers possess an important role in the defense system of host against different stimuli it consists of a sequence of tissue and cellular reaction that modify microvascular permeability and the local hemodynamics causing at over abundance the activation leukocytes those are the produce after the activation that can be detrimental to the both attacking stimuli and host to balance out these impact the body has endogenous antioxidant mechanisms karo sir conclusion nikalo sir these are these are the until last <laughs> conclusion response to treat treatment and disease severity of psoriasis patient can be evaluating using inflammatory markers like tnf alpha interleukin 1 b crp e selections interleukin 10 interleukin 6 and allevin by combining all of the relevant inflammatory markers we suggest we suggest to propose a new index valuable inflammatory markers responsible to examine disease severity as essential for refining the therapeutic approach in natural additional basic scientific and clinical research is necessary to develop a potential therapeutic approach for psoriasis management thank you sir ye koi fungal disease nahi hoti sir ye non infectious disease hoti hai sir isme epithelial cell ki and grow wo hoti hai sir multiplications of growth hoti hai isko hum fungal disease nahi bol sakte हाँ जी इसमें हाँ जी सर यही कि सर हम इसको क्लिनिकल रिसर्च के अंदर भी हम इसका यूज कर सकते हैं सर मेथोडोलॉजी में थेरापेटिक इंडेक्स के अंदर सर सॉरी 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 His topic of presentation is factors affecting project based learning intention of the engineering students. Okay, uh Mr. Madan Lal is not available right now. So next we'll have Mr. Naresh Kumar and Shweta Kumari. Mr. Naresh Kumar he will be presenting on the topic evaluation of variation in abdominal aortic diameter in western up patients using ct abdomen please try to wind up in the 5 minutes <laughs> thank you ma'am i am naresh kumar assistant professor of school of health science in omistling global university naresh kumar naresh kumar okay
my paper title is evaluation of variation in abdominal aortic diameter in western up patient using ct abdomen next slide next these are the content of my paper next slide introduction these are the introduction the diagnosis of the abdominal aortic ठीक है नेक्स्ट एम ऑफ एम एंड ऑब्जेक्टिव एम ऑफ द माय स्टडी इज द टू एवेल्युएट द वेरिएशन ऑफ एब्डोमिनल एरोटिक डायमीटर इन वेस्टर्न यूपी पेशेंट एंड ऑब्जेक्टिव टू फाइंड द टू फाइंड आउट टू फाइंड आउट अ वेरिएशन ऑफ एब्डोमिनल एरोटा डायमीटर मेजरमेंट एट एल3 लेवल एंड T12 लेवल नेक्स्ट वेस्टर्न यूपी वेस्टर्न यूपी बड़ा है मैम लेकिन मैंने जो स्टडी की है वो वेस्टर्न यूपी का ही एक हॉस्पिटल था मल्टी स्पेशलिटी हॉस्पिटल ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड बेडेड का उसमें मैंने स्टडी की है तो उस लेकिन मैंने जहाँ स्टडी की मैम तो उसके अकॉर्डिंग मैंने वन मैम ये तो है लेकिन जब जहाँ से भी हम डाटा कलेक्ट करते हैं डाटा कलेक्ट तो रैंडमली होता है किसी भी जगह पे यहाँ पे भी हरियाणा है लेकिन हरियाणा पे भी मैं यूपी वेस्टर्न का यहाँ पे रह रहा हूँ वेस्टर्न यूपी मोरादाबाद मोरादाबाद तो ऐसा तो नहीं है कि हाँ, से पेशेंट पहुंच रहा है क्यों मैं हूँ मथुरा से मैंने सिक्स क्यों नहीं है हर जगह पे हो सकता है और डाटा तो कलेक्ट हम ऐसे ही करते हैं कि मैंने 131 पेशेंट लिए थे उसमें मैंने आ, आपने जब पेशेंट को जब लिया था उस वक्त आपने बताया था की मैं या पे एक महीने का लिया होगा दो महीने किया वन ईयर का मैंने डाटा कलेक्ट किया लेकिन मैम वहाँ पे जो मोस्ट ऑफ दिटीज ऑफ वेस्टर्न यूपी ऐसे कुछ पेंशन कर सकते थे है ना चलो नेक्स्ट स्लाइड नेक्स्ट स्लाइड दिस आर द मेथोडोलॉजी स्टडी साइट माय स्टडी साइट थी तीर्थंकर महावीर हॉस्पिटल एंड रिसर्च सेंटर और स्टडी टाइप प्रोस्पेक्टिव क्रॉस सेक्शनल स्टडी डिजाइन प्रोस्पेक्टिव एंड क्लिनिकल बेस्ड स्टडी ड्यूरेशन कंप्लीट वन ईयर इंक्लूजन क्राइटेरिया पेशेंट हु अंडरवेंट द सिटी दे हैव नॉट एबडोम एरेटिक एन्यूरिज्म एंड एज बिटवीन एटीन टू सेवेंटी से 18 टू 72 टू ईयर्स एक्सक्लूजन क्राइटेरिया वाज पेशेंट विद पेशेंट विद एबडोम एरोटिक एनोरिज्म वर एक्सक्लूडेड पेशेंट एज लोअर देन 18 एंड ग्रेटर देन 72 टू वर वर एक्सक्लूडेड पेशेंट विद कार्डियक डिसऑर्डर एंड वेस्कुलर डिज डिजीज आल्सो एक्सक्लूडेड स्टडी पॉपुलेशन जो पॉपुलेशन कलेक्शन साइज था हमारा वन थर्टी वन पेशेंट इंक्लूड बोथ मेल एंड फीमेल materials multi slice ct scan flips ingenuity core 128 slice machine next slide procedure we measure abdominal aortic diameter both vertebral next slide next slide next next we observed our study abdominal aortic diameter uh, correlate with age and uh, age and uh, uh, gender western up patient male patient have a greater the uh, greater abdominal aortic diameter than female patients and great uh, jo uh, larger age uh, group of patient have greater abdominal aortic diameter than lower age group means 18 to uh, 18 to 28 age group of patient have lower the lower uh, abdominal aortic diameter than uh, 60 uh, 61 to uh, 62 72 years of patient abdominal aortic diameter 
So we can conclude that abdominal aortic diameter of CV is significantly correlation with age and sex. Next. तो और उनका जेंडर है ना रीजन एबडोमिनल एरोटिक डायमीटर जो है वो ग्रेटर ग्रेटर डायमीटर होता है या लार्जर होता है देन फीमेल पेशेंट के एंड एज ग्रुप के साथ भी वेरिएशन करता है एबडोमिनल एरोटिक डायमीटर यानी कि अगर स्मॉलर एज का हमने ग्रुप लिया जैसे मैंने ग्रुप डिवाइड किए फाइव ग्रुप में 18 टू 18 टू 28 ग्रुप जो था वो सबसे लोएस्ट एज ग्रुप था उसका जो एबडोमिनल एरोटिक डायमीटर बोथ प्लेन एंड बोथ बोथ प्लेन एंड बोथ वर्टिकल लेवल पे स्मॉलर था देन जो पेशेंट 62 से 72 इयर्स के थे उनका कंपेयर में ज्यादा था यस सर दिस इज माय ओरिजिनल स्टडी थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच मिस्टर नरेश नेक्स्ट इज मिस्टर मदन राज Please share my slide first. Uh, am I visible? My slides is yes, visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are visible. You have to present your slides from your end. There is a present icon there on the okay, screen. Okay then. Okay. Pre and oh, please oh, sir, try to wind up within five minutes. Okay, I will try. It. Okay. Fine. Okay, right now. Right now. Um, am I? Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, sir. You are audible, and the screen is visible. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you. Yeah. But uh, echo is coming. Uh, is, is there any problem in the technicality? Okay, I'll start. Okay. Uh, yeah. chair person of this sessions and all uh, eminent personalities present uh, in this sessions i like to express my namaskaram my name is modan raj chapagai and i am working in nepal engineering college here in kathmandu nepal and my research uh, topic i mean uh, this is uh, the study i have conducted recently and the uh, title of this paper is uh, factors affecting project based learning intention of engineering students uh to start with this uh, paper these are the contents introduction literature review and finally conclusion then comes the introduction uh, i will i mean uh, explain some, uh, briefly about the background of my study see the engineering college uh, the project based learning is being practiced in engineering education from very long ago and uh, uh, engineers are assigned with the year long project uh, during their final year course and some other projects uh, in the different uh, uh, semester the uh, objective is to enhance their skills uh, enhance their skills uh, given by these projects uh, so that they can develop their entrepreneurial intention uh, or to make them uh, competent in the job market but what happens from, uh, is that the many of the engineering graduates are uh, unemployed here in nepal and uh, very few are self employed but there may be different uh, factors that affect the unemployment uh, uh, unemployment uh, in, in, in here in nepal but uh, we as a being a teacher in the engineering college we cannot do anything about that factors but what we can do is to make uh, our project based learning more effective uh, so uh, So with this, uh, I like to. Uh, the problem is, uh, as I have already mentioned, the problem is the in, uh, ineffectiveness of the uh, project-based learning. Uh, this present project-based learning approach in engineering college. 
and if we go to some other some other literatures that uh, uh, see the effectiveness some in, in one of the literature i have used this uh, i since i am engineering students i have this uh, i mean uh, the format of this is the ieee format so differencing is done in this way so one of the literature says that the uh, effectiveness of the project based learning depends of the behavioral yes. intention of the students hello yes sir okay 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 i'll, I'll, I'll try my best so according to the theory of plan the theory of plan yes yes sir Continue, continue, Okay, okay. So, the, according to theory of planned behavior, the, the attitude, uh, I mean, the uh, behavioral intention depends upon these three uh, uh, variables. Uh, uh, and these uh, these are the variables. So I will go uh, uh, a little bit, little bit um, first. Uh, so, there is my research question. These are the three, uh, three of my research questions. Uh, the, uh, and the to answer the research question, these are the objectives. The main objective is the, uh, to determine the factors that are affecting the intention of engineering students towards their project-based learning approach. And to, uh, to I mean, achieve these main objectives, uh, I have set uh, the three the specific objectives. Uh, uh, you can read the, from, the, from the slides. Uh, this, then uh, to, to find out the difference between these uh, variables between the two different departments uh, and the difference between these variables in the male and female students, I have set two hypotheses, read out uh, the null hypothesis, then comes the literature review. Uh, I have gone through the many uh, literatures uh, about this project based learning and uh, learning uh, uh, elsewhere in the world. So these are the uh, additional research, I mean, literature that I have reviewed. And the theory that I have used, this is the plan, uh, theory of planned behavior. You can see here that the, in the figure that the uh, dependent variable is the intention of the students. And that in the left side, there are three independent variables, attitude, subjective norms, and perceived behavior. These are the independent variables. So the, these independent variables affect dependent variables and that determines the behavior. This is the theory of planned behavior, which I have used for this study. So the next comes the methodology that the research design is uh, uh, obviously the quantitative and the uh, the data collection is uh, used for, uh, by survey method that is cross-sectional data that is not longitudinal it's cross-sectional the data taken in a particular time of the time of the period time of time so using the questions the seven point liquor discuss questions then the respondents are Nepal, finally students of Nepal engineering college and the data collection is the random sampling and the sampling frame is 400 uh, students uh, and then the number of sample I have chosen uh, the, using the uh, YMNA, uh, YMNA the, I mean, suggested formula that uh, we can see from these uh, slides uh, uh, where, where I have uh, for the 90% confidence level. So error is about 10%. Uh, and then the sample responded out of 400 uh, sampling frames, respondents uh, are 216. Then comes the these variables. In, in the left hand side, you can see that the dependent and independent variables. Uh, and for the reliability of the construct, uh, to testing the reliability of construct, I have used the SPSF 20, and it, from which I, uh, I have used Conkron batch alpha test for uh, the, uh, to ensuring the reliability. And then the, each of the variables, the alpha value is, uh, is greater than 0. 0.6, which is sufficient to I mean, ensure the consistency of the indicators, that is the questionnaire, and for the validity. Since I have used the tested questionnaire elsewhere and modified and contextualized in, the, in our context, so Validity is ensured from this. And then next comes the normality of the data. For normality, the, the skewness and kurtosis are tested uh, from the SPSS uh, tools, and it comes out uh, within minus two to plus two. That ensures the normality of the data so that we can use the parametric test like the t-test and the uh, um, regression analysis. Then for the redundancy of the uh, collinearity or the redundancy of the questionnaire or the construct, uh, we use, uh, I use a variance inflation factor, which is uh, found to be less than two. And uh, uh, as we know that various uh, inf uh, inflation factor, which is less than three is uh, sufficient to, I mean, ensure that it is non-collinear, uh, that the, the, the construct or the questions are non-redundant. And then uh, we have, uh, I have tested t-test for the difference in the t-test regression analysis. And then comes the resultant, uh, resultant discussion. In the result, we can see from the descriptive statics, it is that, said that the attitude is uh, higher 
94% is the higher and then, then comes the intention and then subjective norms. So that, uh, that this indicates that the students have high level of readiness and high positive attitude towards the uh, project-based learning approach. The next comes the independent sample t-test result. You can see from the left side, uh, you can see that the t-test uh, t -test for equality of means. That means that this, this is the p-value in the uh, SPSS uh, analysis, which is p-value is if greater than 0 0.05, then it is uh, the null hypothesis is accepted, which means that there is no significant difference between students from any two department in terms of these variables. And then next comes the independent t test to, uh, between male and female students. Then this comes all other variables are within greater than 0.5, but one variable behavioral control. You can see from the table in the last uh, last row, it is less than uh, 0 .2, 0 0.5. That, that means they. Alternative hypothesis and all hypothesis have to be rejected and alternative hypothesis have to be accepted. That means the uh, 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 the female students in terms of uh, behavioral control, that means their, uh, their, per their, their perception about the capability um, is higher than the male colleagues. So for the cause and effect relationship between the dependent and independent variable, I have uh, done the regression analysis using the SPSS tools and uh, from which we have found this, uh, I mean, beta coefficients, we can see that the equations become like that, the beta, beta values are given. So the, uh, the equation shows that uh, the 42% uh, one unit of variation of subjective norms, I mean, uh, causes the 40, 42% large variation in the uh, intention. That means from this study, we can say that uh, any, I mean, uh, any increment in the support from the department, support in terms of the support from proactive support from the project supervisor, uh, materials of addition of the material support and uh, support from these um, colleagues. Uh, this uh, uh, a very small increment in so this support can enhance the intention of the my students. So this is the very important finding. So my final conclusion uh, can, can be uh, from this result and discussion, I have derived this final conclusion that the engineering students from different departments have similar intentions. There is no significant difference between the perception about the capability in doing projects and they receive similar thing response department. Female students perceive the capability of doing projects higher than that of their male students. Any additional support in terms of equipment facilities from the concerned department, proactive inquiry from the project supervisor and active involvement of project group uh, members together will significantly improve the intention of the students. Uh, these are why the conclusions and the, uh, and the recommendation, uh, there are some certain limited, I have conducted only the quantitative study but the behavior, behavior thing, what actually, actually the behavior of any individual come, I mean, can be interpreted in detail if we um, carry out the qualitative study along with the quantitative study. That means the mixed method will give the better result, but due to the time limitation and various factors, I can only conduct a quantitative study. And uh, I suggest for the, to carry out uh, the qualitative study in the future. And then at the same time, uh, I have only taken the students, uh, four students uh, as a sample from the, um, my own engineering college. Uh, this could have been better. I mean, the, um, the result can be better generalized if we, can, if we could have taken the more number of students as a sample. So, so, that, uh, so I for, um, the recommended to carry out the further study uh, to taking the more uh, sample from the other engineering college. And these are the references. Uh, and uh, uh, one thing I like to share is here the questionnaire I have uh, uh, I have used to uh, questionnaire I have uh, okay I, I cannot share the, the uh, I want to share the questionnaire uh, but uh, right now it is not visible so thank you very much. Am I audible? Hello. Madan ji, sunre hume. Yes. Yes. Abhi bhot acha presentation tha, kafi mehnat ki hua apne. Bhot acha. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 For such great presentation, we are heading towards the new presenter, that is uh, Advocate Priyanka Sethi. She is going to talk about can microbes be patented, myth or a fact. Let's welcome her. Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Priyanka Sethi, and today I represent 
today i present my topic Sorry for this technical error. Uh, I would invite Dr. Rupal Huda for her presentation. The bang of shift job on female nurses. Thank you, ma'am. A very good afternoon to one and all present here. I Rupal. Today the topic of my presentation is so next the bang of shift job on female nurses. Next. Content of my presentation is introduction, objectives of the study, review of literature, methodology, results, conclusion, and bibliography. Now the starting with the introduction is. Women have become equal participants in many respects at all levels of the society. In almost all the countries, governments are providing special provision for women development and efforts are being made to bring out maximum of their talent. Next. Chef work generally defined as work hours that are scheduled out of the daylight. Many chef workers suffer from additional stress caused by missing out of important parts of their social life and shift work also disrupts their family and personal life. Next. Objective of the study to ascertain problems related to shift work faced by female nurses and to study the impact of shift job in perspective of sleep, fatigue, domestic situation and job satisfaction on female nurses. This slide shows the review of literature, the previous studies uh, done on uh, related topic. Uh, the International Agency on Research on Cancer in 2017 found that risk of breast cancer was 60% higher in women who worked in night shifts compared to those who did not. And Isarki in 2018 in his study examined organizational factors affecting the impact of shift work on work-life conflict and subjective health. Reduced conflict in turn produces enhanced psychological well-being and diminished physical symptoms. <clears throat> Methodology. The present study was conducted in Hisar district. A sample of 30 female nurses was selected purposely from the government as well as private hospitals. And sampling procedure was purposive sampling technique was adopted to draw total sample size of 30. Sample was selected by using snowball technique. 
variables were categorized in two categories first is independent variable and the second is dependent variable in independent variables a schedule was developed for the personal variables and socio economic variables and in dependent variables a schedule and checklist was developed for the dependent variables like opinion of spouse towards shift job impact of shift job work on sleep and fatigue problem of sleep disturbance and for assessing job satisfaction standard shift work index was used tools for data collection survey method was used and the standard shift work index by amarta simon falkar 1995 was used data was collected personally through self developed interview schedule and uh, data collected was suitably coded tabulated and statistically analyzed next now come to the results of the survey uh, the table 1 shows the general information of respondents among this 53.3% of the respondents were categorized under the category of 30 to 40 years of age group 76.6% of respondents were married and 86.6% of respondents were uh, living in nuclear families and 66.6% of the respondents were having 3 to 5 members in their families next 56.6% of the respondents were having their bachelor's degree and 53.3% of the respondents were uh, on temporary employment basis and 70% of the respondents were having their full time job 70% of respondents were working more than 6 hours a day Uh, opinion of sp spouse towards shift jobs uh, result shows that 33.3% of the respondents spouse were having neutral attitude towards their night shift jobs and 33.3% of the respondents spouse were extremely supportive through day shift jobs preference of respondents regarding night shift schedule 50% uh, of the respondents were uh, prefer preferred a single block of night duty per year table 4 shows that problem of sleep disturbance it is 6.6% of the respondents were having problem related to the amount of sleep they normally get now comes to the table 5 which shows that the impact of shift work on sleep and fatigue uh, 16 sorry 16 out of 30 respondents were generally feel have uh, less plenty of energy and 18 out of 30 respondents in night shift Uh, feeling quite active 16 out of 30 respondents in night shift uh, usually uh, feel less alert and 15 out of 30 respondents in day heaven uh, less plenty of energy whole day next now come to the job satisfaction of nurses uh, to, out of 30 respondents 26 respondents were in favor of uh, generally that uh, they are very satisfied with their job and uh, 25 out of 30 were said that i am generally satisfied with the kind of activities they generally uh, did in their job and the 24 out of 30 respondents were said that most of the people in this job are very satisfied next now come to the conclusion it can be inferred from the uh, finding of the current study that shift job has a major impact on the sleep and fatigue related issues in the nurse respondents night shift is comparatively less desired by the nurses and this spouse as well most of the nurses are neither very satisfied with this kind of job nor with the salary they get from it thank you any questions uh, sir actually uh, it was my mini research kind of uh, like short communication only to uh, jab mera phd mein course work chal raha tha us course work ke under ye survey conduct kiya tha कर सकते हैं सर बहुत आ, मतलब बड़े लेवल पर भी हो सकता है सेम और रेलिवेंट हाँ जी हाँ जी हाँ जी हाँ जी हाँ चेंज नहीं कर सकते बट सर शेड्यूल चेंज हो सकता है लाइक like, जो मेरे सर्वे से निकल कर आया उसके अकॉर्डिंग जैसे नाइट शिफ्ट मंथ्स में काफी फ्रिक्वेंटली रहती है ठीक है वो चेंज होके थोड़ा सा मतलब टाइम इंटरवल ज्यादा गैप देकर हो सकती है वो बेटर रहेगा हाँ जी हाँ नहीं ये तो नहीं कह सकते 
फायदा तो सर एक ये काइंड ऑफ मिनी रिसर्च हो गई जिससे हमें थोड़ा सा पता चल गया क्या पता हम लोग बड़े लेवल पर करें तो भी ये रिजल्ट आए हाँ जी बट सर जैसे एज फार एज आई नो कि मनी रिसर्च पर तो मिनिमम हम लोग थर्टी सैम्पल से स्टार्ट कर सकते हैं मतलब कहीं ऐसे डिफाइन नहीं है कि आप थर्टी सैम्पल्स पे नहीं कर सकते हाँ कर सकते हैं बट हाँ लार्ज स्केल पर अगर करेंगे तो वी विल डेफिनेटली गेट द बेटर रिजल्ट Any other question? Okay, thank you. We are moving ahead with Ms. Priyanka Sethi for her presentation. Can microbes be patented? Myth or fact? Good afternoon, everyone. Myself Priyanka Sethi. Today I present my today I present my topic is can microbes be patented myths or fact? But can and can or cannot be patented microorganism and patent. Patent. What is patent? The the word patent originates from the Latin words pater. which means to lay open to make available for public inspection legal rights what is legal rights legal rights for new inventions employing scientific and technical knowledge it is an intellectual property rights relating to inventions and it is and is the grant of exclusive rights what is exclusive rights the exclusive rights is for limited period provided by government in exchange of full disclosure of inventions for excluding other from making using selling importing the patented product or process patent right are territorial in nature and obtained in one country cannot be enforced in other countries the territorial rights jo hogi wo sirf apni ek country ke liye hogi other than not other than other countries 
the brief history of the Indian patent system. The yeah. Act 6. Yeah. What can what can be and cannot be patented inventions inventions means a new product or process involving an intuitive steps or and capable of industrial applications what is invention in micro 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 organizations the new and novel inventive steps capable of industrial applications is patentable subject matter is Process methods, machines, manufacturing, manufactured articles, and new compositions. Genomic DNA and vector DNA. Recombinant clone is, is plasmid vectors. Protein product and microorganism. Protein product is patentable and microorganism variants are patentable. Products is, what is the pro products? Human insulin, vaccines, blood, clo blood clotting factors, bit toxin. The famous case is Diamond versus Chakrabarti case. In this case, the Diamond Chakrabarti, the Chakrabarti is the engineering of at General Electric. Its claim is process and process for method of pro producing bacteria. But in India, it's rejected the case. Same in file, same filing the case is United States. Since microorganism is a non naturally occurring manufactures or compositions of matter and is a and is a product of human dignity, having a distinct names, characters, and use. Procedure for patent grant, filing application provision and complete. After that, early publications and publications after 18 months. After that, request for examination within 48 months for fi from filing. Then uh, examinations, after that, first examinations reports. Then response to be submitted within six months, extended up to three more months. After that, refusal, then you, can, you, can, you went to the court and appeals. Second part is you grant the until 20 years. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, ma'am, for your presentation. For the next presentation, uh, do we have Sarat Chandra Kafle? Sarat. Sarat Chandra Kafle. Yes, ma'am. Are you available? Yes. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you have to make a compilation within five minutes. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So just have a quick summary for that. This topic sure, is sure, Arima sure. an exponential smoothing model for forecasting monthly precipitation in Bharatpur, Nepal. Please go okay. ahead. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. I am Parat Chandra Kafli, uh, PhD scholar of Home Studying Global University. Today, I am uh, going to present my research paper entitled Arima an exponential smoothing model for forecasting monthly precipitation in Bharatpur, Nepal. Uh, these are my uh, contents that will that I will present today. Uh, mainly precipitation refer to any form of moisture that fall from the atmosphere to the earth surface, including rain, snow, uh, sleet, hail, or drizzle. So precipitation is different from rainfall, and uh, the study is based on pro uh, pricto uh, pricto and it is the term used in NASA's modern era retrospective analysis for research and application. And the data uh, that I have used is obtained from this uh, NASA website. So the term pre 
is used there and it is the correction uh, corrected form of precipitation that involves comparing comparing the observed precipitation involved within uh, with modal estimates and adjusting the observation to match the modal output and this uh, precipitation prediction is a complex task because of its nonlinear nature and random nature uh, but it can be modeled with the help of a different statistical tool like uh, arima uh, and exponential smoothing model uh, esm and that is being used here arima is a uh, uh, integrated form of uh, two models uh, ar and yame ar refer to auto regressive uh, model uh, whereas yame refers to moving average and the term i stand for integrated which is used to make a data stationary if we uh, discuss about the arima model of the order pdq then the model may be expressed as uh, displayed here and the assumptions uh, of arima models are the data uh, for which we have we are going to uh, may, uh, develop a arima model should be stationary over the time that means it should have same mean and variance over the time and if we develop a model arima model the errors from this model uh, should have uh, should uh, identically independently distributed uh, normally so these are assumptions of arima model and if we are discussing about uh, exponential uh, smoothing it is also a model to forecast uh, time series uh, values and it is uh, it uses a weighted average of past observation to make uh, to make prediction about future values and the model uh, defined here mathematically and terms are displayed here the objective of this research paper is uh are determine the best model area model and determine best uh, exponential smoothing model and they compare to compare uh, these two models uh, using mes mean square error approach and uh, give a best model to forecast uh, monthly pro uh, precipitation methods and material the research is based on secondary data and the data is taken from uh, this website uh, of uh, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, and it is uh, a time series data uh, from 1991 to 2021. Uh, this is yearly data and uh, uh, it is the average uh, uh, precipitation, uh, average monthly precipitation uh, for each year. And the study area is Bharatpur, Nepal, which is uh, which has a latitude and longitude of 27.70 to and uh, 83.44 respectively. The data analysis tool used here is uh, RStudio for Windows. Uh, and uh, I, I uh, uh, divide the data set into two sets, namely training set and test set. And the model is developed for uh, uh, training set and uh, tested for uh, test set and based on uh, MSC, I uh, choose the best model. This is the uh, geographic location of my study area. Now uh, discussing about results. Uh, first plot is uh, showing the data from 90 uh, means uh, the taken period and it is very random in nature. Uh, and is not stationary. After that, uh, I take uh, log for this uh, data and uh, it again become not stationary. Uh, then I take lag, first lag, first order uh, differentiation. Uh, and again, it is not stationary. After uh, taking second lag for our second order uh, differentiation on uh, log transform data, I get stationary uh, or the data become stationary and it is uh, determined by argumented Dickey Fuller test as shown here. Uh, and uh, to dis as discussing about the uh, monthly rainfall, uh, sorry, average monthly rainfall per year, uh, it was maximum, uh, maximum in 2021, where the, uh, in each uh, month, 
average uh, rainfall is uh, fine to be 7.38 mm and it was a uh, minimum in 2002 with 1.29 mm per month uh, now i develop arima model after i get the data stationary and this is acf and pscf uh, uh, diagram and this diagram suggests that uh, it, it uh, the model arima model 4 to 0 will be uh, appropriate because uh, ACR plot shows uh, there is uh, there are significant spike up to 4 lakh and PSCR uh, diagram shows uh, there is uh, significant spike up to 1 lakh. Uh, however, however, it will be uh, decided based on AIC criteria because I have uh, chosen this AIC criteria for uh, to choose best mode ARIMA model. Now, uh, using uh, ARIMA function in, in R, I get these uh, 24 ARIMA models and the model having minimum AIC is highlighted with green marks. Uh, as shown in this table, ARIMA 110 has minimum AIC. However, it is not stationary in um, first order integration. So uh, I choose the best model for uh, second order integration. Uh, ARIMA 1 to 1 has minimum uh, AIC 24.71 in second order integration, uh, so second order difference. So I choose uh, ARIMA 1 to 1 is best ARIMA model. And then I choose, I uh, uh, test for its uh, accuracy uh, or its assumption uh, that is it should have uh, uh, IID errors. IID errors normally distributed. Uh, so the model uh, chosen here, ARIMA 1 to 1, uh, whether the, this model have uh, IID errors or not, I uh, plot this, uh, uh, the plot of histogram in this uh, histogram, uh, this uh, nearly uh, shows that the uh, errors are normally distributed. Again, I test uh, this, uh, whether this is, uh, this, sorry, these errors are uh, IID or not. And the uh, Shapiro test shows the errors are normally distributed. Thus, the model one to one uh, satisfying all the requirements of ARIMA model. So it can be used for forecasting, and this is best model. And the model is expressed here in the bottom. And uh, for exponentially smoothing model, uh, I use uh, ETS function for uh, determining uh, exponential. Uh, smoothing function alpha and the alpha is obtained at 0.4772 the model is displayed here now i'm going to display uh, sorry discuss about which one is the best model because i have chosen MS, okay and arima model and uh, based on these two model i got different uh, for uh, sorry forecasted value for the test data set from 2016 to 21 and the yamsc is minimum for arima model thus uh, arima model is uh, best one uh, for this uh, among these two models so this is my conclusion uh, is arima one to one has uh, minimum yamsc so arima can be used as best model to forecast monthly precipitation average monthly precipitation for each year and this is my uh, references. Thank you. Namaste. So, any question? Thank you, sir, for this session. Welcome, ma'am. Uh, we'll be moving ahead with the next presenter. That is Miss Promila. This is also an online presentation. Research scholar from OSGU. Till the time she could join in, I'll call the next presenter, Mr. Jagdish Prashad, 
microbiologist from HEU, from GJU. His topic is growth of lignocellulitic fungi in different media and their qualitative screening to determine lignocellulitic activity. Yes, sir. अभी मेल किए सर हमने हाँ थोड़ी देर पहले जिग्गीस परसेंट की नारस अभी किए सर एक पच्चीस पे आपको बताइए तुमने उस राय दे दिया बस जो ग्रीन टीशर्ट टीशर्ट वाले अंदर आइए देंगे Good afternoon, one and all. Present here, myself, uh, Jigdish Prashad, Assistant Scientist, Department of Microbiology, Chaudhary Chandra Singh, Haryana Agriculture University, ISAR. Now pursuing PhD from the Department of Bio and Nanotechnology, Guru Jameshwar University of Science and Technology, ISAR, Haryana. My topic is on growth of lignocellulitic fungi in different media and their qualitative screening to determine the lignocellulitic activity. Next. As you know, waste is the major problem. And uh, basically, crop residue contain uh, mainly three type of uh, major components, which is cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin. And uh, these are non-biodegradable, but uh, we have some enzyme which uh, play an important role in degradation of these crop uh, residue. Next one. The major uh, problem is that uh, in rice residue decomposition is the short lifespan period, uh, but uh, there are some lignocellulitic fungi are there which can degrade uh, these uh, cellulosic uh, material with the help of the enzyme such as uh, lacase, uh, cellulase and hemicellulase. Many scientists uh, performed uh, work on this uh, topic and they isolated different kinds of fungi and they can degrade uh, all these uh, lignocellulitic material but uh, the problem is the rapid decomposition of these uh, lignocellulitic uh, component is there next one uh, this one uh, the slide uh, we share uh, the unutilized residue of total residue that is generated in india by different crops cereals, fibers, oil seed, pulses, sugars, and others. The major problem of crop uh, residue burning we are facing today, that is uh, global warming, greenhouse gas emission, as proposed by National Green. And these are the impacts, such as atmospheric environment, human environment, soil environment, Decline in microbial biomass, loss of soil, organic carbon, soil biodiversity, fertility, and there are many more diseases are there due to these uh, production of aerosol particulates, smogs, has, and uh, there are many hazardous problems. So, 
in our study the material and method first of all we have uh, collected uh, samples from uh, 21 various location throughout the state of haryana and uh, they were carried out in the lab for further analysis next one uh, isolation was done with the help of enrichment uh, technique and uh, they are then screened as per standard method given by Andrew et al. on CMC Agar Media, Zylan Agar Media and uh, after that staining was done and uh, clear zone of uh, appearance was observed which indicate the hydrolysis of the cellulosic material John to John colony ratio was calculated by using the formula diameter of John divided by diameter of the colony. Lignolytic uh, material or uh, microorganism usually they uh, secreted the lacase enzyme and this was also screened with the help of ABTS, tannic acid and uh, red and azure D and these plates were incubated at different uh, time intervals for uh, both thermophilic as well as millophilic organism. Now results and discussion. These are the 21 site. Uh, from Krikshetra, Gorakhpur, Ratya, previous slide. And 75 isolates uh, of these fungals were isolated from these different locations. Next one. These uh, fungi uh, were grown on different media such as PDA, uh, Ross Bengal, SDA, CNC and Jailan Agar. And uh, in all these media, they were found to be positive. Next one. These are the 70 next 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 one then some characteristic uh, were also noticed uh, such as colony morphology colony description physical appearance and uh, reverse of these colonies and these were the characteristic of all the 75 isolates next one next 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 one then uh, qualitative determination of these uh, cellulitic and gyloritic uh, capabilities for the various fungi isolated from different locations of Ariana. We saw different uh, growth on CNC, gylan, and uh, their cellulitic capacity and gyloritic capacity was determined, and uh, their ratio was also, uh, zone of hydrolysis was also observed, and it was found that uh, different colonies performed different. Uh, performance of uh, these uh, enzyme production and uh, you can see all these uh, in this table number four next one next next <coughs> screening criteria for the detection of lignolytic uh, enzyme activities on solid media with different indicators as uh, someone in these uh, above tables such as uh, plus two plus and three plus and negative reactions Next one. And these are uh, some cellulose degrading, which is indicated by clear zone around the colonies in CNC media. Next one. These are all the 76 uh, fungi are there. Next one. Next. These uh, two plates in which uh, we have also observed cellulose degradation, which is indicated by clear zone, yellow zone around the colonies in Zylan Agar Media. Next one. Then summary and future uh, perspectives. All the fungi, they exhibit good growth in all the media. And during the present investigation, it was found that only 24 out of the 75 isolate uh, with the highest zone of hydrolysis were chosen for CNC activity. As you know, microbial enzyme, they play an important role in efficient disposal of pedista and accelerate the nutrient solubilization and mobilization by secreting organic acids. Uh, these uh, crop uh, leftover burning contributes, as you know, uh, they contribute to the air pollution, ultimately to global warming and effective economic and sustainable management of agri residue can be alternative source of income generation. And uh, in this uh, process, we can develop new technologies uh, to handle the agri residues by adopting such uh, clean technologies like in situ biogas upgradation to biomethane, biohydrogenation, pressure swing absorption technology, and bioelectrochemical biogas production. So, all these uh, are the clean 
energy generation technologies are there. Next one. All these are the references of my study. Thanks to one and all. This one is the uh, prospective of our management as there are two type of managements are there off field and in field uh, in which agriculture energy industrial uses but uh, microbial in situ incorporation that is directly incorporated into the soil as uh, in zero tillage and uh, we can uh, degrade all these the rice straw in situ management is there so we can manage uh, such a huge problem with these lignocellulitic microorganism thanks thank you mr jagdish next we have miss anju she will be presenting online the topic for her research is investigation of thermodynamical and electro-optical properties of nematic liquid crystals dispersed with BATIO3 nanoparticles. Ms. Anju Bura. Hello? Yes, Anju, you are audible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, please try to wind up in five minutes. Okay, ma'am. Uh, Good morning, all of you. My topic is. Hello? Yes, yes, you are audible. Yes, my topic is investigation of thermodynamic and electrophysical properties of pneumatic liquid crystals into barium battery nanoparticles. Introduction. The liquid crystal of fascinating organic material being chemical property. Slide, please, Slide, A composite, composite was prepared by dispersing barium titanate nanoparticle, barium titanate into a multi-component liquid crystal material with having wide range of room temperature pneumatic phase. The thermodynamic and electrophysical property of composite sample were studied along with peristyne material. Peristyne material means unmodified material. Effect of barium titanate dispersion of various display parameter of pneumatic liquid crystal, namely threshold voltage, play elastic constant, has been observed. Barium titanate is parallel to the liquid crystal director. Now we start introduction. In introduction, liquid crystal fasc are fascinating organic material being unique in their property, such as directional anisotropic. Liquid crystal appeared smart fluid because of its because of its elastic mediated interaction between medium and align object of disperse into it. The elastic mediate interaction facilitates self-assemble of nanostructure and liquid crystal can be oriented with the help of electric field and magnetic field. It emerges into Liquid, liquid crystal is very useful in electro optical device like a, li, a liquid crystal, like nanoparticle, nanoparticle, carbon nanotube, extra. Liquid crystal disperse with nanoparticle attract scientific technology. Some reports show nanoparticle in liquid crystal change electro optical particles, electro optics. Nowadays, electro optical lead orientation order of liquid crystal medium liquid crystal next so slide next now we have in investigate the thermodynamic and electroptic electroptic property of composite along with pristine liquid crystal with is reported here next
Exper experimental technique. In experimental technique, we take barium titanate nanoparticle, we have size is less than 15 nanometer, like weight is 0.01%. After we add pneumatic liquid crystal, and if we stirring the isotropic phase, have temperature 55 degrees Celsius. By using the magnetic vibrator to get homogeneous, homogeneous dispersion. The homogeneous dispersion is under in the polarized optical microscope. Her magnification is 200. And the dis transition temperature is pure dispersed sample determined with the help of differential scaling calorimeter. The, dif the pastine liquid crystal is composite feel in a capillary action. The cell is made with the help of parallel plate capacitor using inadium tin, tin oxide. And thickness is 7.2 plus minus 0.2 micrometer. And the inner surface is coated with poly polymer parallel plate, have angle is 5 degree. And the, if we pass white light pass through them, we it recorded by photo detector and the photo voltage increase, increase six and a half multimeter of alignment. Next, sir. slide next. Result and discussion. In figure first, a V flow heat with the temperature of peristyne, peristyne liquid crystal bio and biotitanate nanoparticle. Differential scanning calorimeter and run rate have 50 degree. 50 degrees and the minimum range is, range is 0 to 60 degrees Celsius. Initial, we have two cycle final thermogram recorded. We have, with the help of scan rate is 2.5 degrees Celsius per minute. And it thermodynamic study suggests clear temperature, which is pneumatic to isotropic transition temperature. Next. So next. Figure, sir, figure. Next slide, sir. Hello. Ma'am, next slide. Hello, Anju. Yes, ma'am. Anju, you need to conclude within one minute. Okay, ma'am. Only one minute, okay? In, 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 in this figure, in pure liquid crystal, there is no appearance in, in this two a table. And if we add nano liquid crystal, add some 0.0% weight, barium titanate, we found there is some texture in this figure. Next, electro optical structure. Figure, figure, sir, figure. In transition voltage, the peristyle liquid crystal and barium is present by applied the next light, sir. It have voltage is alternate, apply alternating voltage, one kilohertz with varying amplitude across plane and code plane. Its intensity is measured with the help of photodiode and by applying applying the electric field. The trans uh, third voltage determined three recur. When voltage apply initially low, the liquid crystal lie in plane of cell because of anchoring condition due to the bright state is obtained and the low voltage up to 0 0.50 voltage. Pure liquid crystal. If we increase the amplitude, it reduces the intensity of transmitted light. Minimum of transmitted light shows that the state is called standard transition. If we increase the total voltage, next slide, voltage, the liquid crystal depends on play elastic constant K11 and that selenot S is dielectric and isotopic. Next slide, sir. Yes, ma'am. Can you directly yes, come conclusion? Yeah, Can you directly come to a conclusion? Conclusion, yes, ma'am. Small amount of barium pattern nanoparticle in the pneumatic matrix of host increase the pneumatic isotopic. And the transition temperature and stabilized pneumatic phase evidence from thermodynamics and electric study. Let's see, the third voltage 
require for switching of molecules from the planar to homotrophic and the biotitanate nanoparticle composite infused energy efficient display and display electronic device based on nanoparticle and liquid crystal the purpose of our study is thermodynamic and electrostatic property next composite uh, the thermodynamic and electrophysical properties of composite sample were studied along with a pyrrhine material effect of barium titanate nanoparticle dispersion on various display parameter of pneumatic liquid crystal unit threshold voltage display elastic constant has been observed the coarse liquid crystal have pneumatic ordering with the spot of alignment of barium titanate particle parallel to liquid crystal director this constantly improved the electrophysical parameter of composite system thank you so this and thank you thank you miss anju thank you yes. yes thank you miss anju next we have mr ganga prasad sapkota Mr. Ganga Prasad Sapkota. Okay. Yes, it's online. He will be presenting in online mode. ओके मैडम नमस्ते गुड आफ्टरनून टू ऑल रेस्पेक्टेड पर्सनालिटीज एंड पार्टिसिपेट्स इन दिस रिसर्च प्रेजेंटेशन प्रोग्राम मी गंगा प्रसाद साहब कोटा पीएचडी स्कॉलर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ स्टैटिस्टिक्स ग्लोबल यूनिवर्सिटी हिसा माय टॉपिक इज इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ फैमिली सोशियो डेमोग्राफिक कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑन पेरेंटल एटीट्यूड टुवर्ड्स अर्ली चाइल्डहुड डेवलपमेंट इन भरतपुर नेपाल इंट्रोडक्शन early childhood development refers to the physical cognitive social and emotional growth and learning that occurs the children in children from birth to around the age of 8 during this period children go through significant developmental milestones and acquire the skills and knowledge that form the foundation for future learning and development early childhood development is crucial for a child's overall well-being and success in life parental attitudes towards early childhood development play a significant role in a child's development this research focus to examine the differences in the attitude of parents towards early childhood development due to the family's socio demographic characteristics we can define the early childhood development in terms of intellectual creativity emotional and social development intellectual development the growth of cognitive abilities including thinking reasoning problem solving and learning that lays the foundation for future academic learning and successes second one creativity development nurturing children's ability to think outside the box explore new ideas and come up with original solutions through imaginative play exploration and self expression third one emotional development developing the ability to understand and manage one's feeling one's feeling and emotions and developing healthy relationships with okay One minute, sorry, madam. One minute, just. Slow up the net.
Boy, this one is slow. Need is slowly. Let it slow down, madam. Few minutes, please. Let it slow down, madam. One minute, madam. Sorry, madam. Yes, yes, madam. Hello. Hello. Hello, madam. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, madam. Yes, ma'am. 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 Yes, Chitam district Bharatpur metropolitan city one number 29 Nepal sample size 92 same parents of children age 3 to 7 years of children sampling method purpose of sampling data collection method face to face interaction using the direct questionnaire method with five point Likert scale questionnaire validation validated by five experts in the same subject area internal consistency assessment. Uh, Chrome Batch Alpha used to assess the internal consistency of the data, data analysis method, descriptive as well as analytically statistics, chi-square test to test the association of variable cross tabulation to describe two or more variables simultaneously, data analysis tools, SPSS, software, and Excel. Sample details. There are 92 samples of the, uh, of the child. The responses of the child is uh, taken through, the, through their parents. Male 44, female 48. Age lies between three to seven years of the child, whose response is taken from their uh, parents. That's why age of uh, three years, only nine, four, four years, 20, five years, 19, six years, 25, seven years, 19. Uh, those 92 samples are taken from ruler 58 sample, from urban 34 sample. Parents are belonging to the profession, agriculture, 32, services, 20, business, 5. Uh, profession of family, self-employed, uh, self-employed, 42. Foreign and others, 12. Hindu, 48. Buddhist, 40. Christian, 1. Muslim and others, 3. Result sample details. Variables, uh, categories, count. Number of child in family, one child count 31, two child 48, and three or more child 13, among them literate 52, uh, illiterate 52, literate 35, educated 5. Types of family, nuclear joint, nuclear 58, joint 34. All the data are primary data. Face-to-face uh, -face interaction, the data are taken face-to-face -face questionnaire methods, result factor analysis and uh, factors. Here, the, um, among 18 questions, there are only four categories, four factors or four categories, like uh, intellectual, creativity, emotional, social. These 18 questions whose views are divided, whose views are grouped in four, and taking the responses of similar questions like this way, which is, uh, uh, which is the uh, yeah. which is uh, yeah uh, four factors four factors means intellectual creativity emotional and social using factor loading the table is shown after this the results the variables only area family type and educational level of the family 
area wise development chi square test is carried to test whether there is significant association between different socio demographic variables and childhood development variables intellectual development creativity development emotional development and social development the chi square calculated value of the area to the intellectual 2.227 where p value is 0.52 similarly creativity calculated chi square and p value 2.354 and 0.501 emotional and social in this cases the values all are uh, greater than p values means 0.05 so there is no association the area of intellectuality uh, uh, area of intellectuality creativity emotional and social can we type family type means 0.001 p value and chi square calculated 13.6 similarly the last one the social 0.03 which is less than 0.05 value of the p so there is a family type is the family type impact uh, impact means there is the uh, family type so one minute sorry the family type does not uh, does not association does not association with uh, intellectual and social uh, intellectual and social uh, factors all others are all others are uh, not association means null hypothesis is accepted in conclusion finally the study investigated the relationship between family environment and creativity intellectuality emotional and social factors of children so, is the experience um, sorry madam sorry. in bharatpur metropolitan city of number 29 sample size not to already mentioned uh, internal consistency and trusted validity questions were reliable with coronavirus all factors of more than 0.7 in each group the four factors showed high reliability with an eigen value greater than 1 intellectual development had no significant difference in the standing area but child had a significant impact emotional development depends on the location with no significant difference between joint and nuclear families social development joint families had a comparatively high impact the social development of the children and children from the joint families being more social than from the nuclear families thank you very much namaste please any question thank you so much sir thank you madam thank next we have miss pramila she will be presenting online from physics department miss pramila Ms. Pramila, please try to wind up within five minutes. We are very short of time. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Good afternoon, all. I am going to present a paper in my under my research work synthesis and characterization of conducting polymers. Under this, I am presenting electrical properties of polypyrrole. As scientists and researchers are paying close attention to the conducting polymer because of their numerous uses in the variety of sectors, including EMI shielding, gas sensors, solid state capacitor, super capacitor, these conducting polymer have a high conductivity, super stability, and ease of synthesis. These conducting polymer are crucial in both applied and basic research because of their particular characterizations. Additionally, by adding different kinds of dopant to the polymetric net. Polymer matrix such as highly conducting carbon containing compounds, metal oxide, nitrates, chloride, these conducting polymer structures and electrical properties can be changed. While the conductivity drop when less conducting material like oxides are doped, such a highly conducting dopant conductivity is increased. Such a result, numerous electrical components may be made using composite made of these kinds of conducting polymers. Our primary objective in this research project is to synthesize pure polypyrrole. Thus, in order to achieve this, we created these samples in its salt, which has a high conductivity. For this methodology, synthesis of polypyrrole in situ polymerization procedure was used to create a pure polypyrrole sample. In this synthesis, 1.25 m of the oxidizing agent 
APS and 1 mO of the polypyrrole monomer was dissolved in distilled water and agitated for 1 hour before being cooled in the refrigerator for 1 hour. The APS solution was placed on a magnetic stirrer after cooling and monomer solution was added drop wise in the oxidant solution. The solution was left on the magnetic stirrer for 48 hours. Polypyrrole green precipitate were then separated out and repeatedly washed with the distilled water and methanol until the filtrate become colorless. And the end product was dried for 48 hours for 50, uh, 50 degrees Celsius. The synthesized sample, samples FTIR spectra were results. Uh, Spectra were captured using a Perkins model 783 IR spectrometer and potassium bromide medium at room temperature. By analyzing FTI or spectroscopic data, the molecular structure of the synthesized sample has been researched. The FTIR spectra include each of the primary band of the polypyrrole when electron delocalized along the polymer backbone, a band of 1138 cm inverse is detected as identified to be NH positive stretching vibration and the benzoid ring vibration mode of carbon nitrogen asymmetric stretching of nitrogen hydrogen bonding was responsible for doublet bond band which is visible at 1240 and 1295 cm inverse at the wave number 1470 and 1550 cm inverse. Two more bands are seen. The band at the wave number 1470 centimeter inverse is connected to benzoids symmetric ring stretching vibration and while at the band of wave number 1550 centimeter is related to curnoid asymmetric ring stretching vibrations. The results are graphical representation is this and X-ray diffraction study. The X-ray diffraction study <coughs> method was used. Hello? Yes. The Please try to peaks. Peaks. 21. 21. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Please try to conclude in the next one minute. Okay, ma'am. Okay. okay. 21 degree and 25 degree. And graphical representation is this. X, uh, X ray diffraction pattern of prepared sample is represented under this graph. And the conclusion in the situ polymerization method which is based on the straightforward chemistry is used to create polypyrrole sample the Fourier transform ir spectroscopy verify the desired sample growth the ratio of area under the curve of the asymmetric to the symmetry band increases which suggests that the conductivity has increased due to doping of the conducting particle. The product sample XRD analyzed revealed that they are amorphous in nature and in they are amorphous in nature and the VI characteristics of these sample also support the rise of conductivity. These are the references. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pramila. Next we have Mr. Jatin. Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Jatin. I'm from Clinical Biochemistry Research Center, Department of Biochemistry, MD Rotak. Today, I'm... Why is it? So today I'm going to represent my research work over skeletal muscle atrophy, where we tried to inhibit the major 
initiators of muscle differentiation and muscle de degradation, the calpains and caspases. First slide, please. As we know, skeletal muscles are 30 to 40 percent of total human body mass that are long bundles of multinucleated myofibers that are fused with each other, sharing up their plasma and uh, nucle nuclei as well as mitochondria for higher ATP production. So the basic functions of skeletal muscles in human body includes the posture maintenance, locomotory, locomotory movements, breathing, and the heat generation during cold stress. And the fifth one being the notable to show up on the slide, but uh, the major glucose dump site at post lever. So the several conditions, whether sarcopenia, so cachexic, or uh, some muscle disuse, they lead to disintegration of muscles and if even if we are not doing anything and just sitting for 12 hours straight long, our muscles start to disintegrate. That is termed as atrophy. So the main factors behind this muscle degradation or muscle atrophy are the four proteolytic systems, the calpains, caspases, ubiquitin, proteomal system, and autophagy. Out of these, UPS and autophagy are just the major end processing units, while caspases and calpains are the primary initiators. Caspases are known for their uh, classical activation in inflammation and, uh, in, and apoptosis, but in case of skeletal muscles, the apoptosis is quite diminished as there is uh, no individual single cell available and the myofibers are fused. That's why in, instead of uh, single cell apoptosis, the apoptosis of myonuclease takes place. So calpain system. Calpains are uh, nothing but the regulatory proteases. They either activate caspases and disintegrate the jet disk of muscle fibers. So in our study, 50 male Mr. Rats were classified into five groups. One was control and four were treated. Uh, one was uh, classically denervated in the left sciatic nerve and uh, three denervated group treated with either calpain inhibitor or caspase inhibitor or a cocktail of both. Next one, please. Uh, post the treatment, the rats were sacrificed and uh, all four uh, Hindley muscles were harvested. As observed, there was a significant reduction of the percent fraction muscle loss post denervation upon calpain inhibition. As we can see, the soleus muscles showed the maximum results of inhibition and denervation impacts were the highest on day seven on soleus, being the soleus direct in intervention with the sciatic nerve. Next slide, please. The tibialis anterior, and tibialis anterior muscle also replicated the results, but up to a somewhat lower level than soleus. Upon the de denervation 7, significant upregulation of the various proteolytic pathways and uh, muscle fraction loss was observed. Next. Similarly, gastrocinemus muscle, uh, there was a significant reduction of uh, percent fraction loss. Next. Two slide skips. These are the histological implications observed. The first one is the denervation day 3 and treatments. As we can see, the inhibition of either caspases or calpenses, there is significant reduction of uh, muscle disintegration as can be in the seen in the transfer sections and there upon caspase inhibition there was a significant upregulation of myonuclease that clearly indicates the reduced apoptosis of myonuclease in the muscle fibers and the reduced condition of myopenia. So these were the myosin heavy chain, western bloating and mRNA levels checked by real-time quantitative PCR using forward and reverse primers as mentioned below. Uh, the results replicated the histological implications as is seen in the histological slides upon HNE staining. There was a significant upregulation of myosin heavy chain as the treatment or inhibition of proteolytic system prolonged for the seven days. Next. Uh, this is MRF1. MRF1 Murf -mur. is a marker of uh, muscle disintegration through UP UPS system upon in inhibition of either caspases or calpains and the prolonged exposure to the inhibitors. There was a significant reduction in MRF1 expressions either at the messenger RNA levels or at the protein levels. Next. These are the inflammatory markers uh, co-assisted interleukin-6 and in, uh, TNF-alpha both uh, diver at the NF-kappa B stage of signaling cascade and both were significantly down regulated upon inhibition of either caspases and calpains. Next. So the summary inhibition of uh, either calpains or caspases considerably prevented the per percent fraction loss or total body mass reduction post denervation under atrophic situations, inhibition of anyone reduced the muscle fraction loss by up to 40% individually, while collectively they lead up to the 60 to 70% loss. Inhibition of anyone increased the UPS key component MUF1. So inhibition further reduced down the inflammatory composition also. Next. That's, thank you. Any questions?
Thank you so much, Jatin. After Jatin, we have Yatika from Mathematics Department. She will be presenting online. Yatika. If Yatika is not present, then uh, Mohini. He <coughs> will be presenting. Yatika is unavailable at the moment. Okay. okay. I may start. Yes, you may start and please try to wind up within five minutes. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Mohini, PhD research scholar, Home Stilling Global University, Hisar. Uh, my presentation topic is fixed point theorems in complete cone S matrix spaces. Ma'am, please, my PPT. Please. This paper contains some fixed point theorems in cone matrix space using implicit relation and also contain several generalized results. Mainly, author extend the result of Segi and Dung in this paper. Uh, firstly, I will tell you about what is fixed point. Fixed point is a function. Fixed point of a function is a point that mapped to itself by the function. Uh, example, uh, firstly, I will tell you uh, how can we define fixed point fx uh, by an example uh, if we take fx is equal to x then we see that uh, zero is mapped to zero then f zero is equal to zero it means zero is a fixed point then a uh, next example fx is equal to x square uh, here this mapping contains two fixed point zero and one because f zero is, is equal to zero and f one is equal to one a theorem concerning the existence and properties of fixed point are known as fixed point theorems. Ma'am, my PPT, my slides, please show me. We are trying to upload your PPT, but it's not showing as of now. You can okay. see your PPT, right? Uh, Ma'am, is it visible okay. from your end? Ma'am, uh, please. Uh, please. It's not visible to us. We are not able to upload your PPT. So uh, I think you may proceed with your work and by just explaining it. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Uh, in 1886, Poincaré initiated first fixed point result. And in 1912, Browser published a result in this field. After that, in 1922, Banach contraction uh, principle came out. Uh, it defines any contraction in a complete metric space has a fixed point. After that, uh, my work on S metric space introduced by uh, introduced by uh, adjacent adjacent and Navneet Huda, uh, which is established some fixed point theorems in S metric spaces, which is generalization of G metric spaces and D star metric space. Here, some uh, some definitions are there. First definition is metric space. Metric space let x be a non empty set and a metric on x is a real function d x cross x to r which satisfies the following axioms. First, distance of any two elements is always greater than or equal to zero uh, for all x, y belongs to x. Uh, if we take two points from the set x, which is a non empty set x and y, all, we see that always distance between x and y is greater than or equal to zero. It means no negative distance is always there. And if dxy is equal to 0, if and only if x is equal to y, it means distance between two points, if distance between two points is 0, if and only if it happens only x is equal to y. When points are equal, then distance is 0. And distance is 0 when points are equal. This third axiom is when distance of x and y, uh, distance of x and y is always equal to distance of y and x. Uh, it means when we are taking distance x to y, and y to x, it seems to be same. Fourth uh, uh, property is triangle inequality. 
it means dxz if we are taking three points from the non empty set x uh, x uh, the three points are x y z uh, we say that distance of x and z point is always less than equal to distance of x y plus distance of y z for all x y z belongs to x this d where d is a metric and x is a non empty set the pair x comma d is always known as metric space uh, and d defined this uh, metric or distance function the element of x are called its points next my definition the next definition of mine is cone metric space let x be a non empty set suppose the mapping d x cross x to e where e is a real banach space satisfying uh, three axioms such that d x y distance is always greater than 0 and second one is distance is zero if and only point name third is distance so, sorry second is distance of x and y is always equal to distance between y and x and fourth is triangle inequality Mohini, please wind up okay ma'am okay, here are some you, results that, uh, contributed by me there are three lemmas which is using um, my theorem theorem number 2.4 the theorem these are the references. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mohini. Next is Menika. Thank you, ma'am. Menika is available? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Menika, please start and try to wind up in the next five minutes only. Okay, ma'am. Good afternoon, Good afternoon everyone. everyone. From this side, Inka, and my topic of presentation is EOQ model for decorating item with the price sensitive demand. This paper presents a model from retailer's point of view when supplier offer a permissible delay in payment and demand is price sensitive in two storage facilities shortages are allowed and fully backloaded additionally in the model formulation interest earn on shortage has been considered which is more practical further the application of fifo and lifo dispatching policies has been investigated under trade credit financing the basic objective of this work is to determine the optimal inventory optimal inventory means with optimal size which maximize our profit and minimize our total cost comparison between lifo and fifo dispatch policies has been exhibited with the numerical example which eventually serve as a guide for organization to take appropriate decision under prevailing environment a comprehensive sensitive analysis has to be performed to explore important managerial insights demand and price is the one of the most fundamental concept of inventory management demand basically depend on the choice of customer and also Medical, the maximum. please, please uh, put on your camera your camera is off we can't see you we can't see the ppt as well yes ppt oh, what's wrong when PPT is not working from mm -hmm. your side. It's not working from your side. It's okay. Just finally come to your conclusion sli slide and conclude your work. Okay, ma'am. Okay. My conclusion <laughs> is uh, in my uh, topic of your presentation, EOP model for that item with price sensitive demand. I use two model LIFO and FIFO model. In LIFO model last in first out and FIFO model first in first out. We collect some data and realize that LIFO policy is most appropriate for using in inventory management. Thank you so much Menika. That was very nice. Uh, next is Ms. Deepti from Mathematics Thank Department. You. Deepti will also be presenting online on the topic economic order quantity model with time dependent selling rate for perishable items having shortages. Deepti, are you there? Yes. 
Looks like Deepthi is not there. Yatika is available. We we'll proceed to Yatika. Hello, good evening, everyone. Yatika, please start your presentation Hello. and try to conclude as Hello. fast as you can. Yes, Yatika, you are audible. Good evening. My topic is my topic. FM, uh, FM as law folder. FM means uh, fuzzy fight exponential or uh, fuzzy fight uh, interval and arrival rates. Loss model it means a system in which customer have to leave the uh, leave when the space is full because of limited waiting time. Space is called loss model. Uh, my main idea is the basic idea. In in this paper is to apply ZA uh, extension uh, principle. Two pairs, two pairs of mixed integers, non-linear programming models uh, are formulated to alpha cut of the system performance measures. The alpha calculate the lower and upper bounds of the membership function of the system performance measures is derived analytically in order to obtain analytic solution to telegraphic uh, telegraphic problem is to it is necessary to have a mathematical model of a traffic offer to telecommunication system Erlang, Erlang determined the grade of service is the loss probability of a lost call system having n trunks we think of a waiting lines as the circumstances we encounter at the grocery store but in the telecommunication world lines can also form for a packets waiting for a trunk to become available. Quinn theory defines a set of formulas that describe waiting lines behavior and can be applied to these and similar to uh, telecommunication situations. Uh, basically, Zede introduced the concept of fuzziness. Is, later, Buckley invested multiple channel queuing systems. Then, uh, Nagy and Lee formulated the alpha cut and the two variable simulation uh, approaches for analyzing fuzzy cues on the basis of ZA extension principle. Now, I perform these Erlang loss model, make Erlang loss model, I take it fuzzy fied, uh, uh, fuzzy fied model of loss model. This is formula of Erlang um, yeah. uh, uh, formula base the probability of unit uh, is lost to the system the uh, b um, bracket s comma lambda by u is called the Erlang loss um, blocking formula uh, now my now mod mathematical my model is Yataka please uh, come on your conclusion Please come on your conclusion. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, ma'am. Basic ma'am calculation ki gay hai. Minimal expected busy time lies between 0 0.180 and 0 0.43, and maximum expected busy time lies between 0 0.283 and 0 0.371. Uh, this, the input parameters like arrival rate and service rate are fuzzy trapezoidal number. The output like expected number of busy channels, busy probability are pa parameterized by alpha obtained lower and upper bound of these alpha curves. Uh, are adopted to construct membership functions and this shows the proposed approach pres preserves the efficiency of the system. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Next, we have Ms. Kiran Khyalia from Biochemistry Department. Then, Adipti from Mathematics. Okay, Deepthi, please try to wind up in the next five minutes and uh, start by presenting your PPT.
Yes. Is there anything wrong? Please start with your presentation. My presentation topic is economic order quantity model with time dependent selling rate for perishable items having shortages. First of all, uh, abstract. In this uh, in this paper, we have given a solution of an inventory model for perishable item under stock and time dependent selling rate with shortages. Uh, we study a deterministic inventory model for deteriorating items under time dependent partial backloading, fashionable goods, and high tech products. Five factors play an important role. Various factors involving very inventory affect the demand. Among them, time and stock are the most important factor. In this paper, we are considering combined stock and time bearing demand. Next, inventory. Inventory is becoming a necessary management in every field of business use inventory control technique to maintain smooth running of their business. Basically, inventory is a, a balance between demand and supply. We may define inventory as a stock, which is maintained to fulfill uncertain demand. Next one is literature review. The fundamental result in the development of economic order quantity model with time varying demand, a pattern is that of Donaldson 1977, who established the classical no shortage inventory model with a linear trend, uh, trend in demand over a known and finite origin. However, his procedure was too complex and uh, tedious in computing. The complexity of Donaldson approach has led the development of heuristic methods. Next is notation and assumptions. To develop the mathematical model, we follow the following notation and assumptions are being made. Notations C3 the ordering cost per unit for order, C2 the purchase cost per unit, P the selling price per unit, theta the deterioration rate, C1 the holding cost per unit per unit time, as the shortest cost per unit per unit time, pi. The opportunity cost due to lost sales per unit, IT the inventory level at time T. Uh, the DT the demand rate at time T, alpha the backlogging parameter, T the length of the replenishment cycle, T1 the time at which the shortage start. Next is assumptions. The proposed model is developed under the same assumption as adopted by CYDI and LYO, except the one related to the time dependent demand and the inflation and time discounting. Next, model formulation. Here, mathematical solution. The solution of equation is given by DIT by DT is equal to minus FT minus beta IT minus theta IT. Uh, DIT DT plus B plus theta uh, B plus theta IT is equal to minus FT. Here we can find integrating factor, then uh, find solution and boundary conditions uh, are applying. T is equal to T1 and I T1 is equal to zero. Then we find purchasing cost and and last we find total uh, profit. Uh, next. References. Thank you so much. Uh, next, we have Parveen from Agriculture. Parveen, are you available? Am I audible to you? Okay, uh, meanwhile, we have Reena Devi. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Please uh, start with your presentation. 
I'm Rina Devi. This is Kola. O S G U. I'm present here to present my paper. Title of my paper: Violence and Torture Faced by Dalit Women in the Autobiographical Novel of Baby Kamli. Abstract. This paper is an attempt to bring light on the newly Dalit married women. how they face violence and torture of their own people women are considered marginalized among the dalit community they are thrice oppressed first due to their gender due to their caste due to their society i point out the amount of pain labor violence and torture how they face their childhood to their death and how dalit women struggle against against torture and violence in the autobiographical of autobiographical novel of the prison we broke by dalit writer baby kamle this paper is show the tradition custom which was follow by dalit women he was oppression dalit discrimination violence and torture introduction literature has always played a significant a significant role in in inculcating social awareness against various issues prevalent in society baby kamle the prison we broke she describe how the lit women face torture of upper caste people they were not allowed to use the regular road that was used by their higher caste the lit women hold a bodies of firewood on their head if higher caste is coming down the road and when he say the humble mahar women fall at your feet master this is like a chant this is like a song which they had to repeat in new in numerable times even to a small child girl in this group and she would fail to join the chant out of sheer ignorance or awkwardness he would march straight to the mahar chaudi summons all the mahar there and kick up a big fuss who just tell me who the hell is that new girl doesn't she know that she has to bow down to the master shameless bitch how dare she pass me without showing due respect then other elderly men and women from the girls sasra community would fall at the man's feet in utter supplication begging for mercy no 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 kind master that girl is new animal in the herd quiet foolish and ignorant if she has heard i her sasra fall at your feet but please forgive us for this for this crime but the master did not end there everybody vented the wrath on the poor girl poor young girl the daughter in law look, took her to task for her sasu this would be opportunity to abuse her immediately the sasu would sarcastically add her own bit to the tirade her father must be a patil that's why he has she is behaving so what does she know about our customs impudent bitch was your mother she donkey that you behave so please try to conclude miss reena okay in the light of the study undertake conclusion in the light of the study undertaking through this paper 
This is the protest against the violence and torture of Dalit women in India. Baby Kamle has influence by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar and wants to see the tradition condition of Dalit women's life, struggle of their life by the end of her novel, this autobiographical novel. So how these Sasur need the life, uh, lives of in, in correct woman forever. Everybody, the Maharwada would resound with the cries of helpless women in the some house, some house or the other. Husband flogging their wives as they were bred, beats would do so until the stick break open. Their backbones would be crushed and so would collapse unconscious. But there was nobody to care for them. They had no food to eat, no proper clothing to cover their bodies. Their hair would remain uncombed and the tangle dry from lack of oil. Mahar women lead the most miserable existence that time. Thank you, ma'am. Anyone ask any question, ma'am? Sound is not Hanji. Sound is not clear, ma'am. Uh, I'm saying thank you so much, Reena. There are no queries from the audience. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, our last participant is Mr. Praveen from College of Agriculture, HAU. Praveen, are you audible? Uh, am I audible to you? Uh, I think uh, Praveen is not available. So that's all. Uh, we are over with all the presentations in the evening session as well. Our last participant with this is Vicky.
Vicky will be joining us uh, within next two minutes. He is from Biotechnology Department and from OSGU only. And his topic of presentation is antibacterial and antiviral role of Bacopa monary. After Vicky's presentation, we will have a validity, validity session in the next 10 minutes. So the guest will be here. Participant Vicky is again with us. Vicky, am I audible to you? Yes, ma'am. Vicky, you may proceed with your presentation. I can't see you. Please uh, put your camera in on mode. Okay, ma'am. And please try to present your presentation as well on screen. Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, my screen is visible or not? So your screen is very much visible and uh, your voice is also fine. You may proceed with your presentation. Okay, ma'am. Good afternoon to all of you. Myself, Vicky, scholar of PhD Biotechnology. My topic is antibacterial and antiviral role of Bacopa monary. Bacopa monary is a genus of 70 to 100 aquatic plants belonging to the family Planta genesiae. It is commonly known as water hyssop, brahmi, thyme leaf, graptiola, herb of grace, and Indian pennywort. It has been used as medicinal herb in Ayurveda since time immemorial. It is one of the ingredients of many Ayurvedic formulations used for ulcers, tumors, ascites, splenomegaly, inflammatory disorders. Optimum conditions required for its growth are wet and marshy lands, temperature 32 to 40 degrees Celsius, and humidity required is 64 to 80 percent. <coughs> then chemical constituent of Bacopa monary. It is characterized by its typical chemical composition, which include various compounds like dimerin type triterpenoid saponins called as bacocytes. Apart from these, the alkaloids bramine, herpestine, nicotine, Herceponin, apigenin, demanitol, monericides, plantanocytes, B, and cucurbitacin have also been characterized the chemical constituent of Bacopa monary. Among all these, Bacocide is the most potent and studied constituent of Bacopa monary, which is composed of Bacocide A3, Bacopa saponin C, Bacopa site second, and Bacopa site X. All these chemical constituents are responsible for, for its higher therapeutic potential. Then uses of Bacopa monary. Nowadays, the use of herbal products is very pro popular due to their less side, effect, side effects and natural origin. So it is also in herbal products due to its detoxifying nature, which neutralize free radicals produced in our body. So it act as antioxidant. Research suggests that damage caused by free radicals lead various chronic problems like heart disease, diabetes, cancer, etc. It contains active compounds like called bacocide, which have been so antioxidant activity mainly in the brain. Then memory booster. It was found to be neuroprotective in various diseases like Alzheimer, Parkinson's, which are the disease of central nervous system and various other cognitive impairment. It also improves our brain functioning and enhance both short term and long term memory. 
then it act as anti-inflammatory as we all know inflammation is our body no natural response against allergen and pathogens but sometimes it cause severe problems in our body so one of the benefit of brahmi is that it have anti-inflammatory properties that suppress pro-inflammatory enzyme and cytokines again reduce anxiety and stress too much anxiety and stress for a longer time severely affect our mental and physical health and also lead various anxiety disorder like panic disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, etc. It effective in reducing the level of stress, anxiety, and associated symptoms. Another one is may help to lower blood pressure. As we know, high blood pressure plays strain on our heart and blood vessels. This can weaken our heart and increase the risk of heart diseases. Various research experiments shows that Bacopa monnieri keep blood pressure within a healthy range. Have anti-cancer properties. High level of antioxidants and compounds like bacocytes in Bacopa monnieri may be responsible for its cancer-fighting properties. Another one is treatment of insomnia. Sleep is essential for well-being of physical and mental health, but the busy life schedule, stress, eating habits disturb our sleep pattern that leads to insomnia and other sleeping disorder. Brahmi at bedtime induce sleep and helpful in insomnia. Anti-epileptic. Epilepsy is a disorder of the brain with learning cognitive and memory impairment. Brahmi is neuroprotective and effectively enhance mental performance, concentration, alertness, and memory. Hence, proved beneficial in the treatment of epilepsy. These all are the uses of Bacopa monnieri. Then products of Brahmi available in the market. In the market, various products of Brahmi which contain Brahmi as an ingredient are available. First one is Be Natural Brahmi, ready to serve fruit beverage. Gen Mamovit flavored Brahm, Brahmi granules, Panchvati Health Pras, Ojasvita, Dabar Chavan Junior Malted Food Drink, etc. These were the references which I were considered. Thank you. Ma'am, it's over from my side. Thank you so much, Miss Vicky. That was our last participant of our two-day conference. Now over to Farha ma'am for the valedictory session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.